Hello. As you guys heard, I'm Anthony Jones. Thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. <clears throat> if you guys can't hear me in the back, just let me know and be like, can't hear you. And I'll, yeah, thank you. And then I'll just shout louder. Um, uh, how many people know who I am by a show of hands? Okay. That's a good amount. And then how many people know of like my journey to how I got where I am? Okay. So I'll give you guys the long version. We got time. All right. If it was a lot of you, then I'll give you the short version of my life story. Uh, but I'm going to give you guys kind of like a little more fuller one, yeah? Um, so when I was a young boy, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that was way too long ago. Um, no, like when I first uh, started this career, um, it was because like the jobs I had before weren't that great. Like I actually uh, always think that I might have always been in retail folding clothes if it paid well. Because I just liked folding clothes and talking to people, right? And, and then uh, I, real, I realized that that's not like a real career, or at least I didn't think so for myself. And so then I took like another job. I became like a plumber. I was like a plumber's apprentice. And then that job was real crappy, <laughs> literally <laughs> and figuratively. And I, uh, I pulled a dead cat out of like the toilet once. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, that was the same. She's like, Look. yeah. That was the same day I quit. Um, <laughs> and and like, kind of explains my creature designs too. You know, if you look at my monsters, I'm like still like it traumatized me. <laughs> I'm like, gotta get it out somehow. Um, but you know, then I decided, you know, maybe I should try something else in my my life. And that's when I decided to, you know, pursue a career in games. Oh, the mic just fell. Is that all right? Is audio okay for everyone out there? It's like, <laughs> all right. Um, and so, and so, what ended up happening is I went to school, right? Because I wanted to, you know, work in video games, right? Uh, but when I went, I went as a programmer because I'm half Korean. So I thought the Asian would kick, and she's like, yeah. <laughs> but then I realized I'm racist, and, then, and I was not good at programming, and it did not work out. I just knew basic math, and um, and so then I kind of like was panicking a little bit, you know. But then I saw that there was like people drawing, you know, and I was like, that's way cooler. And so, uh, I mean, I was like, I draw sometimes, you know. I drew when I was a kid. I could do this, you know. I have crayons, and so, uh, but I saw what they were drawing, and they weren't drawing anything extraordinary. So I wasn't so intimidating. Like they were like just drawing Dragon Ball Z characters, and I was like, I can trace. I can do that too. And, and then that's when I began my journey into this career, right? And what ended up happening was that I was going to, like, fake it. You know, I was like, okay, I need to get over to the art program. Uh, the recruiter was like, hey, you know, you can't just join. Like, you're not an artist. You're, like, a programmer. And I was like, yeah, I know. So she told me I needed to, like, make a portfolio to apply. So I was like, okay, shoot. And so I just, like, for, like, a whole, like, quarter or whole semester like a whole term, whatever, I just was drawing every day. Every day was just drawing, just like filling up stacks, you know, stacks on stacks, dude, just drawing everywhere, you know? And then I went to my counselor with like this huge stack of drawings, and I was like, I just threw it on her desk, and I was like, here you go, here's my portfolio. And she just looked at the first image, she's like, okay, yeah, I'll transfer you. And I was like, no, like, look at all these drawings, what are you talking about? Um, then I realized what I should have done, like, that day when she's like, you need to have a portfolio. I should have just stepped out, came back in, and just, like, <laughs> and, um, but then, you know, she let me switch over, and then that's when I truly began, and uh, I made a lot of good friends. Like, we've talked about Kaylin, you know, I met him around that time, my buddy Edgar, uh, a lot of my other close friends that I'm still close with to this day, and uh, I just was doing the same thing that I did before with, like, the drawings every day, but now I was painting every day. You know, I was like the first one in, last one out. Like me and my friends, we were just always doing it. We were hustling. Uh, because I was like, I would go to like DeviantArt because you guys are lucky with having art station, luxury of like having all that beautiful art consolidated. Where on DeviantArt, it's not consolidated, if you know what I mean. Like you have to go through all the furries and all like the fan <laughs> art. Now listen, man, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with furries. I'm just saying I wasn't looking for furries, you know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, it just became... It was harder to find like good art, and so, um, but I would like go on DeviantArt and just keep like researching. But I would find like good artists that were like 15 years old that would draw these masterful paintings and drawings, and I was like, 
shoot, I can't do any of that. So I decided to just draw and draw and paint and paint. And again, my whole strategy was just to fake it. Like, I'll just trick people. Like, I'll think, they'll think that I'm actually good, but I'll just trick them. Um, I'll just show them paintings and drawings that kind of look cool, and hopefully they'll let me in. Um, but then, as the years went on, I recognized that I was actually getting good. And it was, like, consistent. Like, I was able to, like, draw well consistently. And then I started getting jobs. And then I started working. And then I got my, my first big studio job at Sony. And I was like, do they not know that I'm not that good? And I guess not, you know. So they let me in. And uh, then from there, that was like the time that I, and sometimes I get asked this question. It's like, how do you know when you're good? Um, I didn't know. Like, even when I was at Sony, I thought I was a fraud, right? I was like, I don't think I belong here, you know. And so I was drawing a lot. I was drawing, like, again, first one in, last one out. Years later, I found out that uh, some of the artists were, like, super jealous of me because they thought like I was pumping out so much work and I was like I was pumping out so much work because I was afraid of you guys you know I was trying to keep up and uh, but they're like, no dude you're like raising the bar so now we all had to draw like super like clean orthographics we hated that they let us die before just loose drawings and I was, like, I was just trying to keep, I was just trying to stay like amongst the crowd and um, but like it was like around that time like towards the before I left Sony I realized I was like wait a minute now like people actually think I'm good you know, and, and I say, maybe I am good. And so I started posting my work online, and then people were like, hey, you're good. And I was like, cool, validation. And then, and then more people started doing that, and more and more. And then I just started recognizing that there was a huge fan base for the kind of stuff that I drew. Uh, then people started inviting me to, like, workshops, you know, and I started teaching. And I, was, I found out I was pretty good at that, you know. Well, I wasn't really good teaching, but I was just really good at talking. <laughs> and it sounded like I was teaching. Um, but then I got better by teaching for years. I've been teaching for like seven or eight years now. So I got really good at it. And so, but at the beginning I was just, you know, I just was able to talk in front of people and kind of bring some relatability. And that was really helpful for a lot of people. But now I'm like, I can do that and I can teach you guys how to draw well. Um, and so, uh, and that's what brings me out here. You know, I worked on all these different movies and projects. Um, I'm working on my own stuff. I like decided to learn how to program, went back to my Asian roots. You know? <laughs> um, but like I recognize I actually have to like learn. The Asian's not going to kick in. <laughs> it's <laughs> never going to kick in. Um, and so I just got to actually learn math. And uh, I've been doing that for about two years now. And now I'm like a legit programmer. Um, so I'm like working with some of my friends because I know a lot of artists. And I'm like, hey, like the problem we had in the past is that we didn't know a programmer. We know a programmer now, you know. Uh, but the same thing, same thing that I did to get good at art. I just put time and effort. Right? So. This is going to be a pretty relaxed session. I'm going to draw like a few demos for you guys. I'm just going to see how many demos I can pump out. Um, and then uh, I'm going to talk about like my process probably in the first demo or so. Talk about like art in general, like things that you guys can get value from. My approach to whenever I teach is um, there's this expression of like if you give a person a fish, you feed them for a day. But if you f uh, teach a person how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. So I'm going to do a lot of like teaching you guys how to fish and then giving you guys fish. I'm vegan, so what I mean to say is I'll teach you how to grow potatoes <laughs> and then I'll give you some french fries, you know? And so, um, uh, so there's going to be a lot of that. Um, but you guys can ask questions at any time, okay? And then I'm going to obviously devote like maybe the last hour or half an hour to just full Q&A, all right? That's legit Q&A. You guys can, well, maybe make a line. You guys can dance. I don't know. Um, but definitely you can ask at any time. Okay, and so let's get right into it, yeah? So I guess, here, let's do this first, actually. Let me do this. Let's reopen Photoshop. Overwatch. <laughs> get to work, guys. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Overwatch is cool. Oh, I see what's going on. It's like going to this screen now. Here, I can bring it over. Oh, never mind. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, you missed oh, the Oh, you missed the free pizza. All right, here, let me. I have it open recent. Let's see if we got it. Oh, TB Choi's demo's still here, dude. Let's just look at that one, dude. <laughs> 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 All right, my demo's over. Let's just look at her work for the next hour or two <laughs> and just like break it down together. Um, all right. She's a really good artist. She's also Korean. <laughs> so we we are kindred spirits. <laughs> no. That's how it works. 
All right. So, so my process is pretty pretty simple. Um, I spend a lot of my time and effort um, painting a lot, right? And so whenever whenever I teach my students uh, about art and getting good at it, you know, the thing that I always try to teach them is that, you know, you want to learn a lot of, like, foundational knowledge. Um, you hear that a lot, right? Like, learn your foundations, your anatomy, perspective, your proportions, your forms, you're like, whatever, teacher, what do you know, right? But obviously, when you see a professional say it, you're like, yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, like, I, I spend a lot of my time really perfecting the, like, the uh, fundamentals, Right? Fundaments. Uh, I'm used to texting, so handwriting is like <laughs> fundamental, yeah, fundamentals. Um, and so, like, the, re the reality is it, it's true, okay? And the reason it's true is because it's really hard to draw things from your memory if there's nothing in there. Right? If you don't know how to draw, like, something in perspective, why do you think you're just going to all of a sudden do it? Um, the weird thing about us artists, what I've observed from artists in general, is that we, we treat art like you got to be good, like right out of the box, right? There's like something really weird about it. Like, uh, like I get st uh, students asking me, like, you know, every time I draw an arm, like it's really hard. Like, I, it's like I feel like I could see it in my mind, and every time I put it on paper, it just comes out like a mess, or it's never consistent. Like, what do you do? How do you get better at that? I was like, well, I just draw a lot of arms. I like learn how to draw an arm. They're like, no, I've done that, and this like it doesn't work. And I was like, no, 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 you don't get it. You don't just do it a couple of times, and it's like, well, I did my work. Now I should be able to do it. It's like you don't go to the gym. You lift up like 20 pounds. I lifted. I did. I had a sore for that weekend, man, and then try to go lift 100 pounds, and expect what the hell's happening? I just went and lift 20 pounds like five years ago, and now I can't lift it. No, if you know anything about like working out, right, you have to obviously go for long periods of time consistently. And so when, when they say, well, I see it in my head, I can see it clearly, I can do all this stuff, right? I'm like, no, you can't. You don't see it in your head. You're lying to yourself. It's an illusion of competence. You think you're dope, but if you were, you'd be able to just do it. And you can't. So just admit that, right? Just admit that you're not good. And once you can do that, then you can start to try to learn, right? And then they say, well, you know, whenever I study, it's really hard. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's the point. Like, you've you got to recognize the reason why you're studying and practicing is so hard is because, again, you're not good at it. Like, I, I don't play basketball, right? I wouldn't just go to the basketball court and just expect to be really good at it, right? Um, and people might think, like, well, you know, the, there's some talent. Some people are just more talented. And so using the basketball analogy, think about, like, Kobe Bryant. He's taller, right? Maybe he's genetically engineered for basketball, maybe, right? But that's not the reason why he's so great at it. Because all the people he goes against are just as genetically modified. <laughs> and he still balls them up. You see my point? Yeah. So there's clearly something else going on there. And when it comes to art, I think what it is is we take it away too personal. We think that, like we've been taught in the Western society, uh, or just cultures in general, that Art is one of those things that you're born with. But I have kids, and I see other kids. Uh, I feel like uh, drawing and being creative is actually a natural state, a human state, and it's beaten out of us uh, with years of school. Like, because all my, all my friends, all my kids' friends, and, or my friends' kids, and all their kids, and all their friends are like, they're all drawing, they're all playing, they're all doing creative stuff. You know, they're learning about how Abraham Lincoln by like creating like diagrams with like popsicles and whatever, you know? That's like a beaten out of us. Um, and so I think that we are all able to be really good artists, right? And most of us, most of you guys have just stuck with it. Well, maybe the other parents were like, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to be a doctor. You're going to be an engineer. You're going to be a scientist. I think those are the three jobs that only exist, <laughs> right? Those are the only three jobs that exist, right? Um, but if you know anything about education, like those are the three jobs that are usually like pushed on you when you were growing up. I know it was for me. I, again, I'm half Korean. My mom was like, you, you be doctor. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, I, I was thinking about it. You know, I do like helping people. Um, but I don't like school, ironically, <laughs> now that I'm a teacher. So, you know, the, 
the the fundamentals, man. And I wanted to like really preface why I say you should learn the fundamentals with everything I just said before about like, yeah, it's gonna be boring, y'all. Yeah, it's gonna be like sucky. Yeah, it's like annoying. Yeah, it's like hard. But that's the difference. That's what separates the winners and the losers. You know what I mean? Everybody in here is very, very capable to be on the winning side. You know what I mean? And so I'm going to give you guys a couple of examples. And again, I'm, I'm going to demo. And I have to say all this because once I start demoing, it's going to look like magic to y'all. <laughs> okay? Um, I promise you, it's going to feel like really crazy. But once you understand why it's happening, then you understand, okay, he's earned it. Okay? So you won't be shocked. And there's, no, there's really no reason why no, no, no one in here can earn it as well. It's absolutely true. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of ways of thinking about this. All right? So imagine that like, you have like, a, a bunch of fires. right? And so when you go to like, GDC, you go to like, the art station party, you meet all your favorite artists. Right? <laughs> I saw you, buddy. And we're all hanging out. And you're like, oh, my God, they're like real people, and they're nice. And I'm like fucking more motivated than ever. And then pff, that fire is raging. <sighs> I'm going to get home. I'm going to draw every page in my sketchbook. It's going to be lit. And then the next day, you're like, yeah, man, it's, you know, but I got to, like, you know, play some Overwatch. You know, uh, you know, there's Game of Thrones is coming out. I got to watch that. You know, it's research, research. And then the next thing you know, uh, it's going back to, like, embers, right, or just nothing no flame is uh, bursting. And the reason why I want to explain this is because a lot of people say, well, what do you do when you're not motivated? Or how do you get motivated, AJ? And I say, well, that's, that's the difference, isn't it? Um, some days I'm not motivated. Some days I'm not inspired. It's super fickle. You know what I mean? Um, so I tell people I do something else. I just am really patient, and I'm very resilient. Okay? If this was like a video game, you put all your talent points in patience and resilience not waiting for inspiration to strike or motivation. If you want to be a professional, you got to be a professional. You have to be coming in every day, be able to pump out really good work all the time, at any time, okay? Like, wouldn't that be strange if, like, I was working with James Cameron, and James Cameron's like, all right, AJ, I want you to design, like, a character. And I'm like, all right, cool, but, you know, Tuesdays, they're really hard because, like, I don't know, there's something about the sun, like, so I'll get you something when the sun hits the right angle and the butterflies land on my, you know, my monitor. And then I can probably, the inspiration will then finally come to me. He's like, yeah, okay, you're fired. And so, <laughs> <clears throat> because there's another artist that won't say that stuff, right? And so, patience. What is that? Uh, patience and resilience. Well, patience is like, you know, gives you discipline. So if you take the same flame, yes, let's say you have like GDC, everything's inspiring. You go to a workshop. Oh, my God, I saw my favorite artists are talking and doing demos. I learned so much. And then again, the fire is going to go down because it just always will. But the, the base is always burning at a consistent rate, right? How does this look practically? Well, have you guys ever done this? Like, let's say there's like the seven-day week, right? I think that's seven days. Who cares? The math. <laughs> the math is not there. And so, like, so now imagine, like, um, you know, tell me if this looks familiar. Familiar, Like one day, like let's say you have to turn in your homework on the last day or something, right? So you're like, on the first day, maybe you spend like two hours or one hour of work. You're like, well, it's all right. I'll just do it sometime later this week. Then later this week comes, you're like, oh, snaps. I'm going to spend like eight hours and really get it in, you know? Um, this is very consistent. Don't worry. I do this as well. Bro, even with like, like every student that I have, dog. I mean, <laughs> even as professionals do it too, so it's not like, it's not unique to students, but it's definitely more frequent with students, <laughs> okay? Um, but so like, you know, you'll end up with like, let's say a total of at 10, maybe nine, like nine to 10 hours of work that week, right? But if you were to do like, let's say three hours every day, like an hour and a half in the morning, hour and a half at night, right? That doesn't seem so hard, does it? Right? And if you just do that, you can obviously see, see where I'm going with this. You can potentially get up to 21, 15 to 21 hours. So even when you're not working like a really heavy workload on every day, but you're just consistently keeping that three-hour workload, you will actually do more work than if you try to rush it on the last two days. And uh, I had a student once, I was telling them this, because they actually had a full-time job already, right? And they were doing that. And I said, like, what are you doing, man? And then I told them, like, no, seriously, like, in the morning before you go to work, spend, like, an hour. And then at night, when you get back home from work, before you go to bed, just do another hour. Like, just do two hours. And you'll be able to do the homework because she's already pretty good. And she's like, okay, I'll try it. 
And in the next class, not only did she do all the homework that I asked of her, it was like really good, and she like was super polished and well pushed. And she was like, "Dude, who knew? <laughs> you know, who knew that that consistency is because it was less stressful too. It wasn't even like it was harder, right? It was actually like it brought her relief. She didn't realize like she didn't. Oh, she realized that she didn't have to like push so hard every day. Um, you only need to do like a few hours a day. I promise you guys." It's just that you gotta put that time in, you know? In fact, I like to try to teach my students to try to stay between four to six hours a day. Uh, try to learn how to work smarter, right? And that it's, a, it's a better habit, too, because when you get, uh, you'll get to where I was, like where you just work too hard all the time, and that's actually bad. I think there's uh, diminishing effects at some point, right? Like, again, if we're using the gym analogy, like if you go to the gym and you keep like, lifting for hours, you're gonna rip your muscles apart. And that's what was happening to me, like, after, like, the four or five years of just really grinding. Because that's what I was taught, you know, and I realized it was wrong. Um, like, I said, I learned programming. Well, I only did, like, two, three hours a day for two years, and I learned programming. And I just used, like, apps, and I just go to websites, and I just learned it. Uh, it just took time, so that's the patience part of it. The resilience is the part where you don't feel motivated anymore, or you don't feel inspired. Maybe, like, one day, you know, something... You just got, like, a bad taste in your mouth or something. You just don't feel good that day. You're like, well, I still got to do it, right? Or maybe your drawings are just all bad. Like, everything you draw is really bad. You still should do it. Because ultimately, I'm going to ask you guys a question. And by show of hands, let me know if you agree with this. Do you think that the more you do something, the better you get? If you believe this, put your hand up. So then why won't you do stuff? You see what I'm saying? Like, why would you tell yourself, I'm not going to draw today? Do you understand, like, even if you're drawing bad that day, you are potentially learning what not to do. That's a positive uh, effect to your growth. You might learn, okay, maybe, like, this whole process, like, painting it this way, like, it sucks every second of it. Maybe this is not what I like. Maybe I need, or maybe I should, like, dig deeper and learn why this is a problem. Instead of saying, oh, today sucks, I suck, everything sucks, going to go get some of that Overwatch pizza party, dude. <laughs> gonna keep I, have, I have a theory. Yeah, go for it, man. Um... My theory is that many people think like that because we are now teaching the generation that was raised playing sports where everybody got a trophy. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know. There's some truth to that. But I, <laughs> but I also think that um, it's, there, there's, like, there's multiple variables there, right? Because more people are going to school, too, right? Like, for instance, they were showing, like, the SAT scores from the past were, really, like, really high and really good. But not everybody was able to go take the SAT. But now more people are going, which is actually a net positive. But it, it definitely curves the average, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, like, it, there's a lot of facets there. But I, I do agree. There are some people um, who tend to go to school with the wrong mindset of, like, um, like, if I go to this school, that at the end of the school, I will get a job. All right? Like, it's just, that's just how it's supposed to work. It's like a video game, right? You go in, you come out, everything's going to be fine. Um, as you guys probably already know, many people are experiencing the reality of this. Um, you know, when you show someone your piece of paper, um, that's great. You showed them that you are, you were consistent and you stayed with something for a long period of time. That's actually pretty valuable. That has some value. Um, but if your portfolio was like the minimum amount of effort, you know, um, that's what they look at. They don't look at your pedigree. They look at your actual work. Because when you guys get a job, you have to walk in and start working. It's not like you walk in and they're going to teach you for, like, another year how to be, like, an <laughs> artist for them. No, like, if you need to draw, like, orcs with, like, spikes coming out of their eyeballs, like, you should already be knowing how to do that, uh, if not better than some of the artists that already work there. Right. Uh, I learned this firsthand. I, like, um, lost, like, job opportunities to my teachers, <laughs> you know? Like, imagine if you guys went to GDC, you applied for a job, and they're like, oh, we just hired a guy. Uh, his name is Anthony Jones. Like, that can happen to all of you guys. So I'm literally your competition, right? And so, like, take it very seriously. Like, um, your school is a resource. It's not a given, man. You're not, gonna, you're not guaranteed anything. You've got to earn it. Um, and luckily, our industry is very merit-based. So if you really have the chops and you really put your stuff out there, it, it will work out. It will. There's always going to be some studio. There's new, always new studios coming up. There's um, 
Um, there's big studios that have more expansion, so they're looking for more artists. It happens all the time. So I'm going to show you another example, and then we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to do some paintings. So this is how I see it. So here's like me. Here's my hat. Here's my beard, my epic beard. That. And then like, here's like all of like the people who follow me, who admire me, who always ask me questions and stuff, and they say, you know, there's an obstacle in the way, AJ. Like, how do I, how do I go over this obstacle? And I'm like, I don't know. Let me look around. And then I find like a footstool. I'm like, oh, look, we can just jump on that footstool and jump over. So we all jump over, and then now we're over here. You know, my beard's even more epic now, right? <laughs> but less, less people are over here now. Like some people are like, no, nah, f that. Like, who, what's on the other side? I don't know what's on the other side. I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. Just let's go. They're like, no, I don't trust it. I'm really scared. I don't want to go. But some people are like, no, I think it's dope. Let's do it. And so some people come. It's not as many people. And they're like, uh-oh, AJ, that wall is even larger, bro. And I'm like, okay, what? what's up? Let's see what's up. And I look around. I'm like, oh, look, there's a ladder. Right? And I'm like, hey, let's climb the ladder, y'all. And I start climbing, and then we go over, like some of us. And then, again, some people are like, what? No way. Like, that's, like how are we going to climb over the other side? We're going to fall to our death, bro. And it's like, well, we can probably take the ladder and just flip it over. Like, nah, that's too, that's too intense, man. Right? And so now we're over here. You know, my beard is truly epic. You know, I have my hands out like this, too. I'm like, really wise. That's what wise people do. Like, I'm wearing like a cloak. <laughs> anyway, yeah, with my hat, though, and my Nikes. Right? So, anyway. But, you know, there's like, even less people, right? And they're like, Oh man, AJ, we like this wall right here though, this obstacle, this is clearly where it ends though, isn't it? And I'm like, you know what, man, it, it looks pretty daunting. Let me figure out what to do. And so I start looking around. I can't find a ladder. I can't find a footstool. Everyone's panicking. Like, this is it. This is where art dies, you know? And I'm like, oh guys, I figured it out. If we look at the wall, there's like little cracks and stuff. I think we can like climb it, but we have to like train. We had to like mountain climb, you know? So then I, climb, I learn how to mountain climb. I take a moment. I like learn and train. And I'm, I'm climbing. I'm finally climbing over, right? And I'm like, all right, guys, let's go. You know? My beard. Well, let's, let's go, man. Let's climb. And you guys are, some people down here are like, but I don't know how to rock, uh, rock climb, bro. I was like, yeah, I know. Me neither, but I, that's why I learned. And they're like, yeah, but that's like work, though. Where's the, where's the ladder? Where's the footstool? I'm like, yeah, no, I couldn't find one. There's no ladders tall enough. There's no footstools. So you just got to climb. Let's go. And you're like, that, I don't, that's higher then. You know, I'm like, all right, man, well, I'll see you on the other side. Let me know when you climb over. So I'm over here already on the other side. Some of you are like freaking out and everyone's like, oh, see, he left us. He left us, you know? <laughs> and then one person's like, you know what though? He said, I need to learn how to climb. I'm going to learn how to climb. And then this person keeps falling. But eventually, he or she climbs over, right? And they're like, they're climbing, they're descending the wall. And as they're descending, they see me down here with my hat, like my beard, like on the ground. Like, I've been here for years, right? And I'm like working on something. And then I was like, oh, AJ. Oh, man. Well, here, let me, let me draw a more like exhausted looking version of you guys. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, man. All right. You were right, though. I, once I started learning how to climb and I put my foot in the wall, uh, you were totally right, man. That, that worked out. Okay, what's next, man? He's like, I don't know, but I don't know where the top is on this one. So I'm building, like, I'm, like, SpaceXing this. <laughs> I'm going to build a rocket ship. I, I started learning astrophysics. <laughs> we're going to figure this out. You know, help me, like, grab those, uh, grab those tools and those uh, rulers. Let's figure this out. And at this point, these people who climb this wall are like, okay, let's figure it out. And it's really this wall that I want to talk about. Because this first few were like, what, what brush do you use? And I will show you, and I'll tell you. Uh, what are the good tools to use, you know? Or what are the good schools to go to? I can tell you. Like, what are the, the things I should learn? I can tell you all that stuff. But ultimately and eventually, you're going to have to learn how to paint. you got to master those fundamentals. you got to actually have to practice how to rock climb. You understand? And usually people who come over, like, climb over this last hurdle, which is, I understand, it's one of the biggest ones. After that, it's, like, exponential because you get it now. But right? you've had an example of real progress in a real way. 
and now you get it. And that's like the inside joke that all professionals know is that it's just a lot of work. Okay? Like we all know about it. I don't know any single artist. Uh, I don't know any single artist uh, that was like, you know what, AJ? Like, I just woke up, I applied to Blizzard, and it just worked out. It was like, oh yeah, well you had a portfolio? No, I never drew in my life, man. It was weird. I just applied, I just drew one thing, it was like a really good drawing, I just sent it over and they're like, who, are, who is this artist? And then they hired me, now I'm the art director over there. Uh, nobody I know is like that. It's, there is no, um, there is nobody that's like that. Every single artist, and I know thousands of professionals, none of them have like an easy story. All of them work really hard. I was just talking to the guy the other day outside a TV, a TV Choice uh, workshop. He came from Morocco, like, like, they don't have an art program out there. Like, he just hustled, dude. When they found out that um, Kaylin and Paul Richards were going to be out, like, out there, uh, him and his friends, like, drove six hours, like, in the, the desert. We were all laughing because, like, Morocco, we were thinking, like, the music, you know, the Arabic music? Like, that's what was happening, you know? It was, like, really, really racist, you know? And then they, and they just later picked them up, and then, like, even Kaylin was freaking out. He was like, are these guys going to kill us, dude? The sun in the background, the camels and stuff. Um, but like this guy like hustled, and all of his all of his friends are now hustling, and um, it's a great story. You know, I hear those stories all the time. You know, you know, it's, um, I appreciate what you're saying because um, although nobody in here would fit this would fit this description, I have had more complaints this semester that have been relayed to me by advisors about the workload in classes than ever in all my years of teaching. I've never had so many people complaining and whining about the workload, and it's hilarious. And, and also, we have this group called Drawholics Anonymous that we started about, I guess, almost two years ago at this point, right? Um, and at first, everybody was like super pumped, super excited. You had to sign a contract that in, you know, within one year, you would do 2,500 drawings, 1,000 uh, heads, 500 legs, 500 arms. 250 hands, 250 feet. Some people finished it in like three months. And then all of a sudden, people started to drop off. And now, when I go and pitch it to people, I get this weird pushback, like, no, I'm not going to do that, you know? And it's really interesting, the, the way that the culture shifts back and forth, where people are just have this strange aversion to hard work. So it's, I appreciate what you're saying, because there, is, there really is no magic bullet there no 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 special trick that you can do to get profession to a professional level you Absolutely. just have to put in the time yeah and like um i want to be clear here too like uh, i actually am getting better about advocating for like uh the work smarter not harder approach um because uh there there has been some good research that shows that when you really push people like when you put them like there is a drop off significant drop off like you said right um and as a teacher myself right um, my goal, I feel like, is if I can get the person who's the type of person who would drop off to not drop off, then I'm, like, a dope teacher. You know what I mean? Because it's easy to teach the people that are already, like, passionate. Those guys are really, those people are really easy to teach. Because they're already there. They're already, there. yeah, yes, let's do it, boss. You know, whatever you say. Like, if I told them to, like, to, to jump in a fight, a, like, a, a group of alligators, and then, like, you know, with a Wacom pen, and that's how you... <laughs> And then use their blood to, to do their homework, you know. There's going to be, like, one or two people are like, like okay, you know, and they're going to do it. Um, but, like, there's, like, I'm going to tell a good story, then I'm going to jump right into a, a demonstration. Well, actually, you know what? Um, no, I'll tell the story real fast. I'll just tell um, the thing. So what, what I had a student once. Um, I was pretty strict with her. I was like, you got to, like, work on your anatomy. Like, your anatomy is garbage. And she was just like, no, it's not. Like, I study, you know, this and that. Very, really, like, you know, defiant, very, um, like, like talking back in a way that I felt was really disrespectful. And I was telling her, I was like, listen, man, like, the unfortunate truth is I can see your work. You know, this isn't, you can't hide it from me. I can see that you don't know how to do your anatomy, you know. And, and I was like, I'm trying to help you out. Like, if you work on it, you will get better. And I said, you should study, like, however you can. And she was like, well, I'll only study when it's, like, real life. And whatever, and I'm like, no, I mean, that is like a great tool, but that shouldn't be the only one. You should look at photos, you should go online, you should get some books. And she's like, no, only real life. That's the only way. And I'm like, what, why? Why are you putting like um, chains on your growth for? There's no reason for it. 
Um, and then she she dropped out of my class, right? Because it was like a like a good like twenty minute exchange. Like uh, it was like short from uh, like yelling almost. You know, I was like pretty upset. And <clears throat> and she dropped off. And I always think about that because she actually was pretty good. She was a good artist. She just needed to work on her anatomy. And I think to myself like like what could I have said differently to tell her that she needed to work on her anatomy? Because all that she needed to do was to do that, and then she would have improved and built that confidence and been uh, less defiant, you know? She would have started to recognize the, the stuff that I, because I've taught students where I was really harsh with them and really strict, and they were really, really uh, very resilient, but they didn't stop, right? And they would keep working, and then one day they're like, oh, shoot, I see what you're saying now, you know? And they, when that happens, then they're, they're, the paradigm shifts, like their whole perspective of all my advice changes. And now they like take it very seriously. And so I think about her, for instance, and I think I, I needed to get her to that point, you know, um, where she started, she could trust that I'm on her, on, I'm on her team. You know, I'm not fighting her, I'm trying to help her, you know. Right. Um, so now you're not wrong, man. There's definitely like a, a, a pushback to like doing a lot of work because what, what it tends to do is it makes people realize that they're really bad, <laughs> you know. And nobody wants to know that they're bad. You know, like, I used to think I was dope all the time, and I think that was, like, <laughs> that was, like, a blessing, even though I was really bad. Because I was, like, super arrogant all the time. I was like, my work's super good. I remember, like, uh, I had, like, a really, like, really crappy drawing of, like, an orc. It was, like, you know, I had, like, the very bare bones, you know? Like, this is not too far off, actually, you know? <laughs> like, he had, like, a loincloth, and he had, like, an axe. You know, that was it. That was it. Like, he had, like, <laughs> he had some anatomy, you know? You know, but there's like nothing to the design. It was really just like a naked person with kind of a, <laughs> like a pushed face and like a loincloth and like a literally like a like a axe for cutting down trees, you know. And I thought it was do dope. And it was like blue pencil too, you know. So it was it wasn't even like in digital, you know. And it was like I had it in the like the three ring binders, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like I had like one of those things, those five star things you go get for like back to school. And I was like, all right, this is my portfolio, dude. Like hole punched it. And I had like six or seven pieces like this, and I was so proud. And I was like, man, my work's so good. And then um, I went, it was a Noman workshop, and they were doing portfolio portfolio reviews. And I was waiting in line, I was like, oh, they're, when they see my work, they're gonna like, this guy's exceptional. <laughs> and then um, and then there was a guy in front of me who had like a steel portfolio, it was like a, a freaking like 20 by 80 feet <laughs> like portfolio. And he like opened up. It was like a holographic like imagery of all his concepts. You know, it was like this really amazing portfolio, right? Uh, obviously, it wasn't that intense. It was just like a normal like 11 by 17 portfolio and a nice steel binding. But it was like all printed on nice matte paper. Uh, it was like ma like it was made for showing portfolios. His portfolio pieces like each page would be like this beautiful array of like concept iterations. He had like a little story about his thought process. He had all this stuff. And because it was like a, it would open up like that, like he would have then the final image, whatever it was. So it was like doubling down. Like it was like a really amazing presentation. And it was just like page after page of this. And I, I remember like thinking to myself, wait a minute, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that happened. Like I saw, I saw that and I was like, wait a minute, I've been sold a, like a, a bill of lies, man. I thought my work was good because my teachers were just letting me pass classes with this type of stuff. And I was like, this is nowhere near where I need to be. And, um, but like my point is, is that I didn't take it as I should give up. It was more like, oh, I've been look, I've been, I had the wrong standards. My standards were wrong. My standards were like way down here. And I, to that measure, I was really confident. My standards needed to be like, I can't, I'm not tall enough, <laughs> you know? And so that changed. And so I think there's a, um, there's like an adverse reaction to doing a lot of work because of this specific reason. Like, uh, people are very self-conscious. They get, uh, you know, they get, you know, they get defensive because you put a lot of time and effort, and you don't want to be, you want, you don't want to be told that you're actually bad, indirectly or directly. But sometimes you need to be told that you're really bad, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's the way I think the way you can say it. There's a way of going around it. So, uh, I got a timer. Oh, you have a question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's like the sandwiching of it, like compliment, then destroy them, and then compliment, right? 
Uh, my friend Paul Richards has a really good one. He's like, he's like, uh, I, I like my critiques like a vampire, you know. Like, um, uh, I, I want to invite you in before you kill me. You know what I mean? Because like, I think there's like a thing where vampires can't walk into your house unless you invite them in. Yeah. yeah? So I don't know. I thought that was cool though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this demo. I'm gonna do it in about 15 minutes. Okay. Let's see how far I can get. And so, uh, my process is that I like to block in the shapes get all the primary ideas out of the way, and then I start to uh, focus, like imagine like if this is a camera, I start to focus the camera so everything starts to come into focus. And then towards the, fi like the like last five minutes, then I'll start to try to detail and make it look cool. Um, and the reason why I want to do this in this, oh, here, let me show you that I started a timer so you guys are like, he's lying to us. Okay, so it started. <laughs> and you guys made me waste seven seconds trying to show the proof. So my process is, like I said, like I like to start blocking in the forms, the ideas. And so then I like to block in with like big shapes as well, you know? Um, I like to be able to understand what the hell I'm going to be painting for the next, you know, hour or two, whatever I'm going to be working on. I feel that a lot of people like to get really detailed, like real quick, and I think the problem here um, is that if you don't know like what the the overall like message of your painting is, then you're really kind of like wasting your time. You're just kind of doodling, and so if you try to clarify your idea within like the first 10 to 15 minutes, um, the rest of the painting should be okay. And most of you guys will try this at home, and it'll be like, it's going to be really hard, <laughs> okay? Um, but hopefully you'll understand why you need to start practicing this. Now, whether you can finish a painting in like 15 minutes or not, that, that's not the, what's important. What's important is that I'm trying to demonstrate that uh, all you need to know can be done in about 15 minutes, okay? And the reason why I want to show this is because... Um, Again, like I think a lot of people feel like you have to spend a lot of time to really get your idea right. Uh, and here's a, here's a problem that happens from that. So have you guys ever been in a situation where you started to paint your design and you did like a really cool sketch and you're like, man, this sketch is looking dope. I can't wait to put my teeth into this, you know? And then you start putting your teeth into it and it starts getting worse worse and you're like what's happening man <laughs> what happened in my dream you know uh, you guys are laughing because most of you have experienced this yeah. and and this is like a question that's usually brought up is like like you know when I when that happens I don't know like what's going on like I had a clear vision in my mind but as soon as I render it like it falls apart like what's going on uh, and that is a great symptom that you actually don't know um, how to draw things good, <laughs> okay? It's a really good symptom of this, that you actually don't know what is even in your own drawings. Oh, what the hell is that? Oh, okay. The screen went dark for me. Did it go dark for you guys? Yeah? Okay, cool. I'm not, I'm not tripping? All right. And so, the reason why this happens is because you don't know what's in your image. And so what ends up happening is like people then this is another one of those drop-off moments. People start to get really depressed about it, right? Because they feel like their drawing was really good. But again, I, I, I like to teach my students to have an expectation that you just, just a, a, have an expectation that you're at default, you suck, <laughs> okay? If you're at that stage, it's much easier because then you're always growing. But if you have any expectation of value, then when it doesn't come to be, you get disappointed greatly. And it's really discouraging. And what did I say earlier about like, uh, when I asked you guys, like, do you guys ag agree the more you do something, the better you get at it? And everyone said, yes, of course, right? So when your mind starts telling you stuff like, this is sucky, man. Like, we got to get out of here. We got to abort, <laughs> you know? Your brain is doing everything in its power to try to convince you of this because we are just monkeys, man, <laughs> you know? And our brain is like, yeah, listen, I'm all about that energy conservation and learning new stuff is really energy like sucking it takes energy away from this why don't we just keep on eating bananas and and playing overwatch 
<laughs> and, I, and like I said, I'm not unique to this. I, I'm not. Um, but the difference is that I've trained myself to stop thinking this way. I used to be really distracted easily as well, you know? Um, because your brain is really good. It's like, listen, dude, we'll do it tomorrow. It's not going to be a problem, you know? Like, you got plenty of time tomorrow. You know, once you wake up, you you just right away, you'll just start doing it. And then you don't wake up, right? And you're like, oh, okay, well, I'll wait till after lunch. I need to get some food, get the day started. And then the day gets started, and then you're like, oh, man, I'm feeling tired. I didn't sleep too well last night, you know? You see what's happening there? Like, your brain is against you, man, <laughs> you know? Uh, and it's not. It's like a it's like an overbearing parent, you know? Like, you know, when your, my mom calls me when I first started becoming an artist, and she's like, are you sure you want to do this art stuff, you know? It wasn't like she, like, <laughs> uh, well, she didn't really believe in me, but it wasn't like she was trying to, like, hurt me. She just wanted me to succeed, you know? And she's like, art is not, like, a career, you know what I mean? Uh, but I had to teach her that it was, you know? I had to show her, like, some of my first paychecks, and she's like, what? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> You know, and so, but you see, the point I'm making is that, like, uh, a lot of times, uh, our brain is doing that, right? It's like trying, it's on our team, but it's like looking out for us. Uh, but sometimes we need to like convince it. Now, this is one of those things that we got to do, brain. Got to figure it out. And the more you do that, the more you have this kind of like inner conversation with yourself. The more you start to convince yourself. Okay, well, let's let's just draw for like five minutes. Can I at least do like five minutes? Because sometimes that's enough. Like, you'll just get started, and you're like, oh, I can do, like, another 10 minutes. It's not a big deal. And then you do, like, another 10 minutes, and then you're like, ah, let's just go for a whole hour. I don't have to do anything. So you got in the hour that you wouldn't have got in anyways, right? But, like, you started with, like, that, that first bite. And you're like, oh, yeah, let's get, let's get moving, you know, like this thing. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, a lot of times people just don't want to get started. They don't want to do these, like, they're really afraid of challenge and so when your sketches are really good and you don't know how to draw them uh, well like after the fact it's because you haven't challenged yourself enough you need to try to finish more paintings because you are bad at it that's why you should do it more and that's not why you should do it less does that make sense in fact you should always think that like if something is hard but you want to do it, like, I want to be really good at painting, or I want to be really good at 3D, or I want to be really good at uh, programming, whatever it may be. Um, and th when it's really hard, but you've told yourself that this is what I really want to do, though, then you should keep doing it, regardless, you know? And I learned um, that I wanted to be a character artist. Like, all throughout uh, school, when I went to AI, they were like, yeah, but it's really hard to be a character artist. And I was like, that's not advice. You're just, like, pointing out a fact, <laughs> you know? I, I didn't ask if it was art. I, I accept that it's going to be challenging. Um, what I'm asking is, like, how, do, how, how should I go about it? How should I get better? They're like, oh, well, you just don't do it and just do 3D. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't do it because it's too hard. You know, the chances of you becoming a, a character concept artist are pretty slim. And I'm like, well, okay, but some people do it, right? Like, how slim are we talking here, right? Like, is it like a lottery system? You know, like, it's like, uh, you know, I volunteer, you know, and then you can be a part of the, the concept art league, you know, um, which is obvious, obviously not true. You just got to apply for jobs and consistently do so, you know. And so obviously none of those people's advice helped, so I kept on looking into it myself. I would, like, steal, like, Nomen DVDs and watch all these video tutorials and stuff. I would go to workshops a lot, listen to people that were better than me, tell me why I sucked, and I said, I think you're right, because when I look at your work, like, it makes me, my mind sing, <laughs> and when I look at my work, uh, I want to vomit, so I think you know what you're talking about, and so I trust you. I remember, like, when I got a review from Scott Robertson, for instance, and he was like, oh, yeah, your materials are garbage, like, you need to work on your material indication, and I was like, okay. I guess I'll do that. And then I went home, and that's all I did for like a month, you know? And he was right. Who knew? The badass Scott Robertson knew what he was talking about, you know? Uh, and so I got really good at like listening to people. I started getting really good at taking feedback because I used to not be good at it. Uh, but then I recognized that, wait, you know, people are giving me advice. I should take it. Uh, the way I look at it, I'll answer just a second. Um, the way that I look at it is like, you know, people are giving me uh, their two cents. Even if it's sometimes it's like a dollar, sometimes a hundred bucks, but even if it's two cents, I'm two cents richer, you know? 
And so, uh, and that's hard, man. It's hard to swallow like, when tell, someone like really uh, talks about your work in a really negative way. Ob obviously, there's a difference if it's like real, like you suck, and that's that's not constructive. But if they like say something that you might not agree with at the moment, but then when you leave and you're like, eh, maybe they're right. You know, let me try it. And in my experience, 90% of the time, those people were right. Even people who weren't like really good artists, their feedback was still really useful. So, uh, what, what was your question? Well, it was more of like a comment. So the key word here is humility. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and like I said, that can be trained too. You might not have it. Like I told you guys, I was like super arrogant. I still am sometimes, right? And so, uh, but like when I when I am confronted with the facts, you know, it's really hard for me to deny it, you know. And the fact was I sucked, and so I needed to get better at it. And so, like, we're reaching, like, the five-minute mark, so I'm going to see if I can start to add some uh, quality rendering to this bad boy. And so when I say to you guys, you know, like, the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes are really valuable, um, it's because, like, if you guys look here, like, you can see that the first 10 minutes or so, I really established a pretty uh, clear vision of what's supposed to be here. Right? So now everything that I'm doing now is just tertiary. It's very detail oriented. It's just, it's just, I'm just adding the, the sprinkles on the donut. You know? I'm putting the candles on the cake. I'm putting the powder on the danishes. I don't know. I don't know why I'm using pastries. <laughs> but like, you know, I'm dotting the, the I's crossing the T's. You know, what's up, my man? Well, my friend here mentions humility. I think that's huge, especially for my career choice. But I'm curious. Yeah, sure. Did you also say that maybe in your development as an artist that helped you by being your own worst critic? Like, well, did other people's feedback make you critique yourself harder so that you work harder? Yeah, what it, what it was is that um, uh, when I got feedback, especially from those people who like had some really validity, especially that's when I started realizing the value of feedback. And uh, to your point, like, what it taught me to do was to stop thinking like default that I should already be good at something if I have no training in it. Um, that's something that I think a lot of people have struggles with. Like, uh, even though like on their conscious mind they know this is to be true, but when they when you see the way that they act and behave, it's not true. It's, they're clearly going contradictory to what they know to be true, right? Um, and going back to like the idea of like my image should be cool because the sketch is cool, you know, but they've never finished a painting before uh, And so every time they try it's always a failure, right? Uh, or it's like really challenging uh, and it's like a real struggle and Going back to the point is like because you, you don't have a lot of experience. You just don't know it well enough um, And it's, it's something really really important to get out of too, by the way, because uh, If you keep having this kind of attitude of like I just do a bunch of sketches that I don't know like how to finish them. Uh, maybe one day you'll draw something that like might have accidentally happened because that can happen. You might accidentally draw something good, you know? And then maybe you get work for drawing that thing. And then when your client starts to ask you to, what the heck? This radio menu thing keeps popping up. Is there a way to turn it off? Yeah, you can just push the first button on the left. Like, like first button. Yeah, first button. This is a left. No, 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 on the Your right, left? Your left. Right. On the left. Yeah, the oh, right. the first button, this one right here on the top? Yeah. Is that the touch? Oh, see? Taking feedback live <laughs> from the audience, dude. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, oh, that's so much nicer. Thank you. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, like, it just taught me to be really good at, oh, what the, the timer stopped. So I'm just going to assume, oh no, I got a minute and 30 seconds. I'm good. It's just a screen froze. Um, yeah, I just got really good at just accepting that I'm not good at stuff. And that was like the revelation, right? Um, it's it's kind of weird to think that you, you, you kind of have to tell yourself that you're not good, right? But I think, again, it's like a defense mechanism that we just have. Like, we just... All of us have it. It's like there's no one really immune to this, you know. Like, um, like even like some of my closest friends, like they'll like talk to me about something, and then I like give them some feedback, and they know that I'm like a you know 
this is what I do, you know, like I'm a professional character concept artist, and they're like working on characters, and I give them some feedback, and they're like, whatever, dude, you don't know me, and they're like, you're crying, and I'm like, what, no, I'm just, just, just do this thing, no, you know, you don't get it, like, I'm just doing this, you know, uh, and these are also professional people who should know better, um, but it's not that aggressive, eventually they come around and they're like, oh, you know what, I think you're right, you know, so even like professionals fall into this trap. It's not unique to students. I just think when you're really, really low level, like when you're lower down the totem pole, you're way more defensive, unjustly, you know? Um, and that's the problem. I think it's just because, again, like I said earlier, people just don't want to admit they're not good at something. It's just not wired in us. It's not a default state. Like going back to um, what Michael was saying earlier, you know, there, there are some people, like I, I have kids, right? And I, I'm... I've been raising them as best I can, and I have some friends, like really close friends, people that I really love and care about. Um, oh, I ran out of time. So this is about 15 minutes in, okay? So let's do another one. Um, all right. Um, so I have like a really close friend, and um, their kid is reckless, man. <laughs> this kid is a train wreck. And, um, but, like, I see how, like, they go about it. Like, the, the kid kind of does a lot of stuff, and they just don't really kind of show any consequence for this, right? And I'm, like, telling them, like, look, you got to, like, it's not just that you should be a, you know, you should, like, listen to your children and give them things. Like, that's, that's valuable, of course. But you also have to give them the, 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 the gift of not being a, a jerk-off when they get <laughs> yeah. older, Right? Yeah. You give them the gift that That's not true. not all things come easily. You know, you give them the gift that their effort value is, is valued. You know, those are things that kids don't learn on their own. You have to teach them. You know, uh, I have um, my kids. Like, I was teaching them math and English before they started going to school, and it was really hard for them, and they were really resistant to it. Uh, but then I know that, like, but if it's really easy when they go to school, they're going to be able to socialize and play and have fun because school to them is going to be easy. And sure enough, that's the case. You know, they go to school and they're getting all this homework. They finish their homework, like, before they even leave the class. And so they get to hang out with their friends at the playground and all that stuff. They get to do all these other things that our kids should be doing. Um, and they don't mind going to school because it's not that big of a deal to them, you know. Uh, they're ahead. And, and that is something that I want my kids to have, that gift of, like, understanding that they just got to put effort. Um, you know, when my, my daughter, I, I would race my daughter, and I would just, like, stomp her, you know. I would just not let her win, <laughs> you know, like on, like, a, 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 on a, a skateboard or something. And she would get really upset. And I was like, sweetheart, it's okay that you lost. Like, everybody loses, you know? And I teach her, I taught her, like, you know, it's okay to lose. It's okay to, like, and she got over it. And eventually she started winning, and then I would let her win. You know, then I would, like, because obviously if I always go full tilt, that's a whole different problem that I might grow in her, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, the world's unfair kind of thing. But, like, um, but I would let her win from time to time, and then she started seeing that it is okay. And so whenever I saw her play with some of her friends, her friends, some of her friends don't have that same, so they get real real aggro when they lose and that's not reasonable going back to what we were saying about being humble like being evil so that's like a gift right but i feel like a lot of people even myself i could i was like spoiled when i was a kid i didn't really have a good grasp of that either i had to learn the hard way i almost lived out of my car you know and so um i think there's a lot of value to just trusting that it's going to be hard y'all but that's why when you guys do all the work and you guys get to the top and one day i'll be seeing you guys do a workshop you know I'm going to be, oh, yeah, I remember. I remember seeing you in the audience, you know? And it's like, uh, welcome to the club, right? And, and it's, really, it's really that simple. So as you can see, right, like, I, oh, I'm sorry, what? You have another I was, question? I was, was going to add to that, but I'll save this to an end. Okay, great. So, so I'm going to draw something else, right? And I'm going to do another 15-minute sketch. Because we still have time. We have 740, right? We've got plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. Yeah, if I keep doing demos of 15 minutes, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of demos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ultimately pick one of them. I'm going to keep working on it after. Cool. So that's the kind of point. I'm going to do like three. So I'm starting the clock. Trust me that the clock, the clock is going. All right. I'm going to keep doing like kind of like a character creature thingy. 
And so uh, here's another thing that I love to do in my workflow is variations, right? Um, this is like some professional advice. Uh, a lot of people tend to just do like one or two sketches and they're like, I'm the best. Like these sketches are the greatest works of art. They're going to hang them in museums and I'm going to be, you know, historic figure for the rest of my life. But the reality is that like I'm a big fan of uh, quantity. You know, you hear the uh, quality over quantity argument, meaning that your images should be high quality and forget, like don't try to pump out just a ton of work. Uh, I'm in the camp of like, you should every once in a while focus on like a quality image, but then in between you should do tons of drawings because um, you're training all the micro stuff that you should be practicing. And when you just throw away drawings like this, it allows you to feel more free when you're in this space, which is like painting and designing. Uh, because if you're always in the situation when you're like going full speed every painting, it gets really stressful and it's actually slower to learn. Like, let me ask you guys a question and we'll, we'll, we'll see how the audience goes with this. So, uh, person A is a person who um, plays soccer, um, I don't know, like plays soccer every day for about three to four hours, just the game of soccer, just plays the game with his friends for three to four hours. So it's probably Caleb. two games. Huh? Caleb. Yeah, Caleb. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's person A, Caleb. Person B, um, they, same amount of time, four hours, but let's say the first three hours, they spend training like drills, uh, doing weightlifting, doing exercises that are very specific to the sport, uh, doing some exercises that are not so specific, but they are indirectly helpful, you know. Um, but just like, you know, micro training sessions of different sorts for about three hours total, and then maybe one hour of scrimmaging, which is, again, playing the game, but in a controlled environment where maybe they will start over at a very specific play, or maybe they'll try to play again, you know. Maybe they'll just scrimmage where the, they just constantly try to score, you know, and maybe the next day they practice on defending, right? So person A plays just the game. Uh, person B trains all these different ways and plays sl somewhat the game. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, person A, raise your hands. Person B, raise your hand. Oh, you guys are smart. Okay. I thought I was going to have at least one or two people, right? Uh, just a second. Um, so the point I'm making is that People don't do that with concept art. People just always play the game. See the problem? Like, you need to be practicing back to the fundamentals. You need to be doing the drills, like practicing anatomy. You need to be doing the, the weight exercises. You need to be painting forms, you know? Just like, can you paint like a cube? You can't paint a cube. Then what hope do you have of painting like a full three-dimensional character, <laughs> you know, jumping at the camera lens, right? There's, there's no way. It's going to be so hard. Um, there's going to be so many mistakes, right? And, and if you look at every professional sport, they don't train just by playing the, playing the game. In fact, most of their training is like not playing the game at all. It's usually all the other stuff. And then when it comes game time, then they play the game. But at that point, like, you know, when the quarterback practices throws, throwing the ball over and over and over again, he's not thinking about how do I hold the ball? Like, is my feet right? Like, it's so, like, built into his instincts He's focused on, can that guy catch the ball? Like, is he open? Like, I'm not worried if I can throw the ball. Of course I can throw the ball. Like, I've been training this. Of course I'm going to, like, dodge, like, the, the defenders that are going to try to take me down. But, like, not always, because sometimes they're also super freaking elite, right? But, like, his focus is not whether he's holding, like, his pen right, you know what I mean? <laughs> his focus is all about the game. Uh, Usain Bolt said it great. He says, you know, um, racing is easy. Training is hard. <laughs> you know, like the race, you just 10 seconds, like literally like 10 seconds and he's off, you know, <laughs> but the training to be able to run under like nine or close to under nine seconds, that's, that's hard, right? Yep. That's what he does like all year, every day is to get fast, you know? And so what was your, what was your question or comment? Yeah. Yeah. Because Kalen, like he does it as a hobby, right? He's not going to be. He's not going to the pros anytime soon. You know, no offense to Caleb. You know what I mean? But that's exactly right. Hobby versus professional work, right? And so, uh, and, and that's kind of the point I want to make here, right? Like, so I'm a big fan of um, 
just like practicing a lot in a lot of different ways, you know. And so right now I'm doing like the second iteration. Uh, I did a little bit of talking, so it's going a little bit slower than I would like, but it's okay. I'll try to pull it together at the last minute. And so whenever you guys are working and you find a problem in your workflow, like there's something that's really str like making you struggle, um, I always recommend that people spend, you know, maybe like five, uh, like, um, not five minutes, like it's been like maybe like an a hour, half an hour, trying to do the thing. Let's say you're trying to paint a character and you're really working on it, like you're trying to do something new or something. Yeah, about after an hour, um, if, if you're really still struggling, it, uh, struggling with it, uh, just stop. Like you, you just don't know how to do it. It's okay. So, and that's an opportunity where you stop and then you try again, but this time maybe you, you open up some reference. Maybe before you do it again, maybe you do some studies, right? Just try something like train, try some training, and then try the painting again. And then try go for an hour again if you can do it. And almost always you will see some improvement, especially if you are, are practicing consistently and constantly. You know, I can't stress it enough. You know, did someone else, I saw someone's hand up? No? Uh, was that you, you just like wiped away? <laughs> yeah, don't. No, no, no moving at all unless you have a question. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so for me, uh, I can't stress it enough. So that's again, that's a lot of me teaching you guys how to grow potatoes. So let's talk about how to. Um, well, I'm going to give you a potato right now. Yeah. So whenever you're you're working, uh, you should flip your canvas a lot. Okay. Um, I did like this. Uh, a video for uh, a website once and they wanted me to like do a painting and then they sped it up to like 30 seconds like an hour painting that I did and the painting was just like <laughs> like the whole time you know and what that what the when flipping the canvas does is it allows you to see the proportions um, more vividly and it shows you the overall design more accurately if you don't flip uh, you you won't be able to catch this. Uh, another potato that I'll give you guys is uh, don't zoom in while you're trying to paint like the full character. You'll probably have noticed that I've stayed pretty zoomed out. Um, if anything, he's always in view, right? Like it might be somewhat zoomed in, but he is mostly in view. And when whenever I see students do a really bad job like with their anatomy and proportions, usually it's one of these two things or both things. That they're, they're not flipping their canvas enough and they're not zoomed out. Um, like their heads are really, really big and their bodies are super s tiny when they uh, don't do this. Um, the overall design, like the values don't make sense because when you're like sitting in here, like you're, you're focused on this, you're only thinking of the values in this localized area. And then when you z go down, you're only focused on this localized area. And when you go down, you're only focused on this localized area versus seeing the whole picture. And then until your values are really bad, because it's just, you're always zooming in, and you're never seeing the full picture. Um, I, I learned this from a really great um, instructor. His name is Marshall Vandruff. And he said something along the lines of, like, uh, draw small to solve the big problems, and draw big to solve the small problems. So drawing small, solve big problems. Drawing big, solve small problems. And so I just, that's always stuck. And it's worked out for me my whole career. Um, and so those are a couple of little potatoes for you guys to numb on. That's something you can take with you right now and start implementing into your work. Okay. The, yeah, the next, the next image uh, that I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit more about design. And we're going to get real deep into the design aspect of it. Okay. But overall, again, what the? What happened to the time? I had like five minutes. Now it says I have 159 or 1,559 minutes. You see this nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. I promised there was like about six or seven minutes left. But just to, yeah, man, reset, bro. All right, here, let's, that was weird. Uh, let's do five minutes. I'm going to like switch to my phone because this, I can't trust this. <laughs> this is not. I don't trust you, Google. Google overlords, dude. Oh, you okay? No, someone else. It's everyone okay? Just someone dropped a thing. Okay. <laughs>
You're okay too, right? All right. So I'm going to spend the next five minutes detailing, trying to get this looking dope. As cool as I possibly can. Hey, Scott, is there audio on the TVs out in the lobby? Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, you know what? I'm going to probably just stop at this one pretty soon and move on to the next one. And so, what I'm doing here is the detail part. I'm trying to get some of the, the charm, making this looking, look as good as I can with the time that I have limited. But the whole idea is that I learned how to draw fast and paint fast um, because I had a teacher once tell me, he says, you know, if you want to work in this industry, you either got to be fast and you got to be, or you got to be good. And I was like, well, what happens if you're both? And he's like, not possible. <laughs> and I was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, he was definitely wrong. You definitely be, do both. And uh, it wasn't like... Um, it wasn't like I took it seriously right after that. It's just that I saw a painter do it. And I was like, oh, it's totally possible, man. Uh, the artist was named uh, Steve Houston. He's a traditional painter. A great story is that he, uh, yeah, I got three minutes. I can tell the story. So, like, he was trying to, um, or he was doing a demo. And during the demo, um, a lot of what was going on was just him talking about his career he wasn't even demoing anything. He was just talking a lot about like how dope he was and like all the famous people he's met, <laughs> you know. And it was cool. It was actually really cool, and it was very inspiring to hear him talk about that stuff. But he wasn't demonstrating, and you know, people were promised a demo. And so eventually, you know, me and my friends, because we were helping host the event for my in uh, life drawing instructor, we went up to our, our instructor and we're like, "Look, man, like we only have 30 minutes left in the class, um, and he hasn't <laughs> he hasn't done anything, you know, just talked." And I feel like people might get upset. And he was like, oh, man, you're right. Okay. So he went up to him. He stopped him, like, in the middle of, like, telling another story about him being in Paris or something. <laughs> and then um, Steve Houston's like, oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. So he, um, puts a, he puts the presentation away. He pulls out his easel. He gets his paint set up. And mind you, like, 30 minutes le is left. And this process itself is, like, taking, like, 15 minutes, you know? And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, there's no, this is not going to be a demo at all, you know? Because I really want to look, I'll watch him do it because he's a really good artist, you know? And then he looks to the audience right before he starts to paint, and he says, I'm the fastest painter you'll ever see. And then, bam, he starts painting. And I'm like, what? What's going on? And, like, he started painting this masterpiece, like, every stroke. He's like, do, 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 arm, do, 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 another arm, do, do, do. Like, and I was like... What is happening? You blink, there's a head. You blink again, it's like he's on another painting. And I'm like, <laughs> what? No. You know, and I was like, like, you can clockwork orange myself, dude. I was like, nah, <laughs> don't blink. You know, um, and he did it traditionally. He's really quick, man. And it made me realize that I, um, uh, I need to learn how to do that. And, and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to be really good at that, you know. I, f I think even like uh, Caitlin and uh, my friends were hanging out when we did the Wacom booth, and they were <laughs> they were complimenting me on that. That they, they turned away for like one second, and they looked back, and I had like <laughs> finished my painting, and I was like, ah, I'm getting there. You know, it's not blinking. You got to turn away for like a f few minutes, but one day blinking, I'll get you. You know, don't blink. <laughs> you know, and everyone's like, what's happening? Yeah, but he's been doing it for for decades. You know, this guy. Uh, is a legend, but he was the one that uh, introduced me to the idea that it's totally possible to be really good and um, and fast. And I just remembered what my teacher said back in the day, and I was like, I'm gonna show him, you know. And so um, after this demo, yeah, we have 10 seconds left. It's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more, but before I do it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about design, okay? And then this is again something that um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys some more potatoes, yeah. I'm gonna get my phone too, so that way I can use a, a more reliable timer. 
<laughs> so just give me one second. Uh, I'm going to use the timer just for my demo, but not for, um, for this lecture I'm about to give you guys. But I want to be ready. So give me one minute. All right. So, <clears throat> so a lot of what you're seeing, like I talked about the fundamentals, right? Like about anatomy and perspective and form and all that stuff. I, I did a lot of drawings. I really try to practice that thing, you know, because um, I'm not, uh, I wasn't very good at it. Uh, but one thing that happened that many of you guys probably experienced too is that I started like trying to design stuff. Remember that orc that I was talking about? Like, like, uh, there was a point where I was getting really good at drawing orcs. Like, I was painting them more accurately, and they were, like, really, like, more convincing. But they were still just, like, wearing loincloths. But now it's, like, rendered, you know what I mean? Um, and so then I went to a, a Blizzard mixer, and I brought my portfolio, and I was showing it to a um, recruiter. Uh, I think it was, like, an art director of some sort. Um, and I showed him my work. He looked through it. He's like, wow, these are really cool paintings. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. I was like, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to get this job today. And he's like, these are really cool paintings, but, you know, you don't really have any good designs. And I was like, what? Shot through the heart. <laughs> you know? And uh, I was like, what do you mean, you know? <clears throat> and he said, well, like, when I look at this, it's just like an orc. Uh, when I look at this, it's just a mountain. You know, like your environment, it's just a mountain. Like, I can look outside. And I can see a mountain. Like, why? What value do you have? And I was like, what? And he's like, I mean, you got to think of it like this, dude. When you do concept art, it's for other artists to look at, for game designers to look at, programmers, marketing people. They're going to look at this, and they wanna, they're they going to want to make it. you got to have to inspire people that these ideas are cool enough to make. That's what concept artists are supposed to help do. We're supposed to help create the vision of the project. You know what I mean? And he said, everything you have in here is, there's no vision. It's just like, you're just drawing stuff that kind of already exists and like, and it's not even that interesting, even the stuff you picked, you know? And when he told me that, I was like, oh man. Like, especially the part where my work has to inspire other artists, that part like really hit me. And I was like, yeah. Because every time I look at my favorite concept artists, that's what they had. Like, I would look at their work, and I'd be like, dang, dude, that's so cool. And I, re I realized my work was not doing the dang dude, <laughs> you know? <laughs> not at all. Because I, then I looked at it, and I was like, I don't feel that way at all. Again, I was focused on my effort, because I put a lot of effort into it. And I felt like that effort has value that should get me a job. But the reality is, no, my effort... It's just getting me better, uh, but my work won't get me a job yet. Like, it has to be good, okay? And we can talk about design more on a larger scale, but I'm going to give you guys some tools that you guys can literally start practicing today, uh, and you'll get better. You'll get better at design. But again, you got to practice it. you got to keep training and doing this, okay? So um, one of the things is uh, the two things that I think are one of the most valuable components, which is contrast, uh, yep, yeah, there you go, <laughs> don't want to write the last two letters, <laughs> and unity, yeah, okay, and so uh, I'll put the T in there, like fading in the distance, <laughs> draw one of those uh, environment characters with a stick, you know, okay, so, you know, contrast and unity, okay, you want to have an image that has a lot of conflicting things in there, or has something that there's some conflict, uh, but then you also want a way to make them all kind of live together, okay? And the next few things I'm going to tell you guys uh, are the tools to help you do that, okay? Um, I like to think of this as like a, a theory of design. So this isn't, this isn't like a, a perfected model, but this is pretty useful, and this is not just for like the kind of stuff that I do, which is like more realistic. This works in animation, video games, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you can even take these same concepts and apply it to other mediums, like music, movies. Um, it's pretty consistent. It's pretty great, and uh, I practice this a lot, and so that's what allows me to draw without thinking about design, because it's like burned into my subconscious these ideas. 
Um, and so when I say like a theory, uh, it's because it's supported by a good amount of evidence, right? Like when, when people usually hear theory, they think, well, that's your opinion. No, it's, it's not an opinion. It's what we know about that thing as of now, right? So like, for instance, we have a theory of gravity, but it's not like we can't use it. We use it all the time. Like we put satellites and uh, robots on Mars, you know, um, because we have a lot of good, valuable, reliable information. But it doesn't necessarily mean we know everything about gravity. Like we, we're starting to learn that it's like waves, and we're starting to really discover what that means. Like we're still like, what does that mean? You know, like we, we look at black holes and everything like falls apart. We're like, okay, what the heck's going on there? You know. Um, so there are some opportunities with this theory of design that could happen when you're like, well, I see an example that kind of breaks the rules of what AJ talked about. And I don't necessarily have a good explanation of that as of yet, right? Uh, maybe some other artist does. But these definitely are pretty useful, okay? And so the first one is layer caking, right? This is the idea that, like, let's say you have a big, like a big shape, right? And then you should probably follow up with like a smaller shape right after, and then maybe like follow up with like a medium shape right after that, okay? This usually can make a good image, just that alone, doing that pretty consistently, okay? Um, two, rules of three, right? So like you have like one kind of pattern, and you want to kind of like repeat that pattern again and again and again as often as you, if, as you can. So I, if I go back and look at this Im, uh, image, and I say, okay, well, you know, this, this pattern is kind of like sharp. See how it's like long? So what if I just do that with this? Let's see if I can like uh, mirror that idea. Oh yeah, it's already looking better. And what if we, uh, we do it where this is doing it too? Like this small thing is kind of following that thing. And then we're gonna go here to create a better overlap. It's already looking better, isn't it? And so then the third thing is counterbalance. And this is just like you just have one pattern followed by another pattern followed by the same pattern that happened prior, right? So let's say and it doesn't have to be like a one, two, one, two thing. It could be like a one, two, three, one, two, three, you know what I mean? You can have like three different patterns, but they're like they're cascading consistently and constantly. And it doesn't have to be like textures, it can be values. So you can have like a dark value with a light value, right? Then a dark value with a light value. And then even within the dark value, you can do it again. Like you can have like a, a more matte dark value with like a more shiny dark value. So you're doing another round of counterbalance, like it's counterbalance inception, you know what I mean? Um, so if we were to do it here, let's okay, well, let's create some, some new pattern, but we're gonna do a little bit of the rules of three. Say, okay, we're gonna make this the dark pattern we're going to make it layer caked because this spacing is different from that spacing that's different from that spacing. So it's not just about shapes, it also could be just the, sh the proportions, right? So obviously we shouldn't uh, make this dark, but we could if we think about it later down the line. But in this small example, no, we, we have to break it up again, right? And so if I can make this shape married to that one too somehow, that's going to be nice and helpful. So like there's like this idea of like it goes like this and it breaks. So what if we do that? Oh yeah, it feels better already, right? And then right here we can do it again. But like we think about it, like okay, this one's like a larger space. This is smaller. But these are all like proportionally equal to one another if you think about it. So maybe we can like mix it up with this one, you know, and give this one like a lot more of that going on there, and then maybe like at the very bottom. So then we end up making like a miniature version of layer kicking, small, medium, large. And you're looking at this and you're probably thinking, yeah, that looks pretty cool. That looks like a pretty cool abstract thingy, you know? Um, whenever I see people who s paint and they don't understand this, it's like they'll put like a triangle, a circle, a square, a squiggly line here. This has that texture. This is polka dots. You know, there's Waldo over here, you know? <laughs> and it's like, like when we look at this, even what I'm doing right there, you're like, ugh, okay, stop already. We get it, you know? Like this image isn't that appealing, isn't it? Because it's, it's too contrasted, right? There's no unity of any kind. Because you can have contrast, and you can have a contrast in abundance as, as long as there's some sort of unity. So, like, when you look at, like, a, a transformer, like, the best one is Bumblebee. Because he's literally um, 
half robot, half Camaro. And a Camaro is only a yellow car and it's beautifully designed with all the forms of the Camaro were designed and designed well. And so it works well on like a, 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 it's a good counterbalance of like really beautiful, sleek car design mixed in with like inner car parts and robotic bits. That's like a good contrast, but it's unified because it's only really like two uh, values. It's, everything is mechanical and hard edged. So those things are unifying everything. But then when you look at something like Megatron, where it's only just like razor blades on top of razor blades on top of razor blades, mm -hmm. and then there's like a little bit of a knife there, and then more razor blades, uh, it's, it's less appealing. But it could be a good design ultimately, because Megatron's the villain. Maybe we want him to not look appealing, you know? Like there's like a visceral feeling like, ugh, I hate looking at that one. Like kill him already, right? So there might be good intention there, you know? Especially if it was deliberate. I don't think it was deliberate, but I like to believe it was. And so, <clears throat> so this is what I'm showing you. So now if we go back and kind of take a look, you can see it like immediately and what I was doing, right? It should be pretty obvious now. So now, um, to go back, it's layer caking, rules of three, and then counterbalancing. Now there's a lot of different things like color, uh, weight of line, um, forms, texture. I feel like all of those other things live within these things. Okay, you can use those other things as tools within, let's say, counterbalance, uh, within rules of three, you know what I mean? And um, once you start practicing this often, uh, you'll, you'll see your work improve dramatically. Um, it's like one of the coolest things for me to do sometimes when I, I explain these things to my students and then I like paint over their painting and I'm explaining exactly those rules and I'm like changing their image in that very direct way. Uh, it's, they're like, whoa, what the hell's going on, you know? And it's not like, uh, I don't change the whole subject matter either. I just keep like their, uh, I have one student who like, did like these battle toad looking dudes and I, I felt like he might have felt like, ah, oh, it's kind of cheesy, it's not that cool. And it's like, no, we can totally make it look cool. You know? That's what our jobs are. We're supposed to make things that might not be cool, cool. You know? Um, and so anyway, so let me go ahead and put on my other timer. All right. This one is disconnected from the machine, so hopefully it should be all right. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint a thing. And again, I like to start with like a, I like to start with a rough, actually, you know what, I'm going to do it. I've already kind of done a profile image and I did a front view. Let's do more of like a back view. Because I think characters have backs, don't they? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Because <laughs> I tend not to draw characters with their backs turned. Like as if they will never have a back. And by the way, whenever you start to work, um, because you see a lot of stuff online, like, like on ArtStation or whatever, of just like amazing work, um, the, that work's always kind of a lie. And I don't mean that it's like a lie, like those artists didn't do it. No, those artists definitely, most of the artists there definitely did their work, you know? Um, what I mean by this a lie, because usually the biggest and best like portfolio pieces were usually a collaboration, you know, there was a lot of feedback back and forth. It wasn't like they just had that idea the first go. And, and it's, it, that's why I'm saying it's a lie. Like, even when I show, like, uh, in my pro section, I try to show, like, all of the sketches I've done. Um, and I say try loosely. I don't show all of it. Because some of them aren't very good sketches. Some sketches were just deliberately to help get the direction in the right direction, you know? So it's more of, like, I'm just going to do this quick drawing. They're going to look at it and then give me feedback. And then from that drawing, uh, I'm going to try to work from painting some cool stuff. You know what I mean? And so um, a lot of times uh, what people see online is, because whenever people do their, their portfolio, like stu young students and stuff, and they're, they're, they're like, dang it, like nothing looks nearly as good as some of these masters, yeah? Um, like they feel like every drawing that these artists do is amazing, and it's not always true. There's, there's definitely rough sketches. I've seen them uh, from these really premier artists. Uh, but they ultimately, we all get to like that really nice concept that we put on our station and they'll look how dope we are. But again, it's like a, a collaboration usually. Um, all of the personal work I do is definitely just my mind. That's why it's not nearly as good, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I, I think that I want to make sure that people understand that. Um, but 
I really am a big fan of doing a lot of work, though. All right, so let me see if I can try to think of something even cooler. Something that's even better because we're looking from behind. Absolutely. Like I want to like in my portfolio also it's like this people's portfolio because they make so much interesting. That's really that's really wise, man. Like I didn't learn that until later, <laughs> okay? So that's that's very smart. And that's good because that's what you're gonna do anyways professionally. You're gonna have art director, they're gonna make you draw a thing like thousands of times, you know? Um um and and that's just how the industry works, right? Um I actually have run into a different problem, a problem I never expected was going to happen, um, where people will hire me to do freelance, right? Because I have like a very specific kind of way I draw, and so there's like, like I'll do these, like these monsters. So there's these, uh, the Love, Death, and Robots shorts. Like I worked on one of those shorts, right? Um, and uh, this team hired me to work on uh, one of the things in the, that uh, show, and I only worked on it for like a month, you know? And it was really quick turnaround, and uh, I'm I'm like this is strange because usually it takes like longer, and it's getting faster. Like I'm like I remember one time I was working with a client, or hey we want you to like draw like some sort of tumor monster for a horror game, and I'm like all right I can do that for you. And so I did like a couple sketches, and they're like, all right we're good, and I was like wait what? They're not we're good here. See, see you later, dude. And I'm like, but I want to keep working <laughs> because even though like because I have like a pretty high uh, day rate. Uh, like, um, I need to work at least four or five days to kind of, like, pay the rent type of thing, <laughs> you know? If I only work one day and I don't hear from anyone else for, like, a month, you know? It's like, what the, you know? And so I'm like, okay, I need to, like, come up with a new system. But that's because, you know, they literally found my stuff on ArtStation. They have, like, a game that's like, this is going to be perfect. We're just going to pay them to draw one for us, you know? It's like a really glorified, like, commission. <laughs> so it's really strange. It's only been happening to me, the, like, last year, right? And I'm trying to find. I'm trying to figure out like a way around that. Um, uh, one one way that I thought about it, one of my friends was telling me is like you should do like a project fee, like to work on your project, it's going to cost like a certain amount of money. Um, but I don't know. That's, I still, I don't know. I feel weird about that, you know. Still, but maybe like you know, give me another five years when I'm like really like I, I do have that epic white beard and I <laughs> look like I should be saying stuff like that, then I'll do it. But I, I don't know. It's just still still feels weird to be like really demanding of. A lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it is professional. Like I am a experienced. Like even if it takes me only like 50 minutes to draw a thing, whatever. Um, there, you're paying for my experience. You're not paying for my time at that moment, you know. Um, and so because I, when I worked for Insomniac, I worked with them for a little bit, and um, that one was for like a few months. That was great, uh, and we worked on a lot of different designs. It's great, and each design was like done in a week, and. Uh, it's because they were, again, they found my work, they're like, yeah, yeah, this is perfect for a horror game. And I'm like, cool. And then they're like, all right, you're going to do this drawing. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I draw it, and they're like, the guy who was in charge is like, uh, that one, render it, and do orthographics. And I was like, got it. And then I'll just do it, and like, here's the next one. And I'm like, here's some of my drawings, they're like, that one. Give us the orthographics and render it. And I'm like, okay. And then it was, it was just real strange. But, you know, when I see, like, the new Spider-Man game they made and, like, all the other, like, projects that they worked on, like, how, like, really polished they are, how, like, it's, it's very clear they're really good game developers. I think it's because they make those types of decisions. Like, they really know what they want. And that's very rare in our industry. It's really hard to find a client that's, like, knows exactly what the heck they're doing, you know? Uh, I worked with a client that's a really big studio, and I, I don't want to throw them under the bus. Because maybe they're going to pull out of this, <laughs> you know? But I was working with them for almost like a year, and it was all, like, always blue sky, right? I would work on a design, and they're like, that's great, man, that's great. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. So you guys want me to start refining that? They're like, no, 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 you know what? Um, let's try it again, but now let's make it futuristic. And I'm like, wait, what? And they're like, nah, yeah, we, we decided we're going to completely change our direction and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know? Um, and like I said, like, they're a really good studio, so maybe that's just how they roll, right? Uh, who am I to judge? I, I might be sorely mistaken uh, about the process, like, years from now when they release their game and it's this freaking really cool idea. 
and uh, like really changes the game, you know. Um, and then there's a good chance that might happen because the other projects that they've done have done that. But it was just really the opposite of Insomniac Games. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, like I don't know if I actually did any real concept for them. <laughs> you know, like I don't know if they're gonna use anything that I did. And it's really bizarre that that happened. You know. And um, but it it could be fuel because uh, when I was working with them, they were showing other artwork that was done like a year ago. Um, and I was like, whoa, man, this is really bizarre, you know? But I just do it because it's, it was still fun. But I get real scared uh, whenever I work on projects that are, like, super floaty like that. Yeah. So let me see if I can talk more about this. So, y you know, I was talking with you guys, right? And I've been painting this. Um, it's very challenging for, for most people, but I, I teach all the time, so it's not too bad. But you can see everything that I talked about, right? We got the dark shape here. We have a dark shape here, but like this one's um, smaller. This is a medium height, right? And then the horns are, uh, I'm sorry, this is smaller, this is larger. And then the height of the horns is uh, medium. But then the length of the horns is larger versus the length of some of these other parts. In fact, now that I see it, I can probably like make this even better by finding a way to like bring that in, you know? If I can really think through this. Yeah, because then I have to change the shape of this. That will help. Yeah, that's already filling much better. And so, like, and even if I bring in, like, another smaller facet, that's going to help a lot, too. You know? And then you start thinking, okay, like, this is pretty barren, so maybe we can think of, like, something we can add here. So we already have, like, a dark shape there. Maybe we can, like, add, like, a light shape and create, like, some sort of, like, pattern. That could be cool. And you'll notice that, like, once I kind of get that that notion, I start to echo that idea around constantly. And I'm thinking, okay, look, there's a space between this top part and there's this bottom part. And it's all black. And I'm like, well, I'm going to separate it with this another light material. And then I'm going to have the other light material down here again. Like, separate it some more. You know? And it looks cool. It just works. And this is true, again, like I said, for animation. Uh, animation, comics, movies, you see it all the time. Right? And now I'm, like, thinking, well, you know, let's, let's mix up the shape. Let's create, like, this little indentation. Well, why stop there? Let's keep adding these indentations. You know? Let's imply indentations everywhere. Yeah make this flow differently. Oh, that works right there. Having that little break right here. And you'll notice over here, like, this material is light. And then I separate it with a dark material. And then maybe what we can do is, because we have all these, like, little in intricate, like, trim lines, we can probably smash them in here. Well, it's, it's looking pretty cool. What if we um, bring this white, like, back stuff to his head or something? Yeah, it's looking, it's looking fine. It's working out. But uh, I, I just do it intuitively. I don't really think about it. I'm, like, I'm doing it because I'm doing a demo, you know, but I don't normally, like, <laughs> like do call-outs of what I'm doing. I just do it. I usually focus in on the subject matter rather than the actual painting. I think that's actually good enough. I have three more minutes left, but it's all right. All right. So we have about, what, 40 minutes left? Is it till 9? Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm going to now have you guys choose... Which one? You guys are going to be my art director. Like, so this is the this is the work that I would have done for a client. Let's say, maybe the character is some sort of weird dude who who has no eyes and you know just wears stuff. <laughs> That's the art direction I got. Um, so one, two, or three. So I'm going to say the number, and you guys put your hands up, and I'm just going to kind of average out what I think was the most. 
you can vote um, as many times as you want. So if you like multiple ones, if you like all of them, that's fine. Okay. So number one, show of hands. All right. So number one is probably not going <laughs> to live. <laughs> all right. So number two. Number two is doing all right. Okay. So that one might be. We'll see. Number three. Oh yeah. <laughs> number one for sure, dude. <laughs> um, so. Here, here's a good opportunity to kind of stop before I let you guys jump into the Q&A. Um, uh, you'll notice that all these designs here, uh, I like them all. Like, I like to uh, draw stuff that I'm going to want to keep drawing later. So, like, because as you guys demonstrated, you know, maybe the one that I liked isn't going to get picked. Like, the one that I ultimately think is the best, probably. Um, and going back to what I said, that's the whole point. Like when you have an art director and it's like what you were saying, you know, you're going to be doing stuff that you might not have expected that you're going to keep working on. You know what I mean? And so uh, I tend to not do this anymore. I used to do this before where I would just like show as much as I could. And then there would be like a really bad design that I would like try to hide in the corner. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, I'll just put this in the corner, but all the good ones are going to be big and large, you know, very clear and very easy to see. And the art director says, hey, whoa, whoa. Whoa, what is this? Dude, money, man, money. And I'm like, no, it's not money. <laughs> and then I have to paint that for like months, you know? Um, and so, so if there is like a couple designs that you genuinely do not like, uh, don't show them. But if you feel like some of them are like hitting the marks that your art director or director asked of you, and you feel like you have to show them, then just redo them. Do a better version, okay? Uh, because if they end up ultimately picking that one, then you're going to have to work on it again and again. Um, like, unlike school, where you do, like, a project, right? You finish the character, you're like, all right, we're done. And then you leave, you go to the next class. Um, it's more like you finish the project, and they're like, great. Now, that one character, draw it again now, but make it blue. You know? And you're like, okay, but I already did it. And they're like, no, no, it's cool, but, like, let's make it better. And you do it, and they're like, all right, great. Actually, let's make it red. And you're like, what? Well, you just made it blue. That's what you're going to experience. Um, and that's something that is hard to simulate in school because there is a fi there is a fixed time limit. And I'm not trying to say there is no fixed time limit in, um, in the industry. There definitely is. But sometimes the deadlines can be pushed. Uh, more money can come in. So, or, or sometimes uh, the company just shuts down because they're really bad at making choices, you know? So uh, because they do miss their deadline. <laughs> And in that case, unlike you guys, you just get a bad grade. Uh, in that case, you get fired or your company shuts down. So great, cool. It's the same thing, right? Bad grade, losing your job, living in the streets, same thing. Yeah. Um, I had a professor once say the only way to make sure the art director doesn't pick the wrong one uh -huh. is that the wrong one is there. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that's a, good, that's a good lesson. I'm glad that person explained that to you. And that resonated with you this whole time. All right, so I'm going to... I'm going to take this guy. We're going to do another image. What? <laughs> what in the world? Okay. I should have paid attention when it was like 124 pixels. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to work on this. We're going to work on this one for the next, what is it, uh, 30 to 40 minutes? So yeah, this will be, um, oh, my voice cracked, what the, um, this will be the Q&A uh, portion, so feel free to just raise your hand and shout your, your questions, and I, for the stream too, oh, there's a mic, there mic. Yeah, there, so there's a mic, um, there so what I'd like to do is maybe kind of clear this pathway a little bit. Um, for those of you who would like to come up and ask a question, um, maybe we can start <coughs> forming a little bit of a line. Uh, if you have already asked several questions, let's give somebody else a shot. Fair enough? Okay. Um, so, come on down. No? Uh, bravery. Hello, Mr. Jones. It's, go, it's, go, it's going into the, to the audio. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. Hi, sir. Um, I wanted to ask, um, are you still doing your um, online tutoring sessions? I am. 
Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, I, I, uh, I pretty much do it uh, year round. I think I usually sometimes will take a month or two off. Okay. Uh, the, uh, especially at the end of the year, you know. But I've been doing it for, I don't know, four or five years now. So um, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Okay. And so I do that. Uh, for anyone who's also interested, I do like just tutorials, just one offs, like five bucks, you know. Uh, those are those are very helpful. A lot of people think they're very like you know they're like easy to digest. It's like usually like an hour or so of me talking about something, and then they can just it's only five bucks. Where my uh, online course is much more expensive. I but, see. But it's it's more personal, right? Like I hang out with a few. I have a, actually one of my students, is, yeah, back there, Jordan. <laughs> he come and hang out, and so um, and I was giving him trouble. I was like, why aren't you doing your homework? Why are you hanging out? <laughs> I, I thought it was okay. <laughs> But like, uh, no, I, I actually like try to take care of my students too, very, very much, because that money is like going directly to me, you know. It's the way I right. see it is that money like buys clothing for my kids and stuff, and right. like food and on the table type of thing. Yes, sir. So I, uh, I, uh, I take it very seriously to try to help the students out. So, Hi, sir. so yeah, definitely is worth the value. I'm trying to say. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, my question is again about the whole collaboration thing and that sort of stuff. Uh, so I've noticed that when I turn in, especially the first like batch of ideations when, I, when I'm when i given an assignment, I'm, I always expect to keep working on it and like work off of the feedback and uh -huh. I never think that the final version is somewhere in there. Got so it. do you think that's like useful, especially for someone lower level like me or is it preventing me from like actually doing my best work and actually trying to find that final version right away? Okay, so like if I can say the question again, just so I can understand it, you're saying that because there's like a limit for like the class, right? Like, like there's like mm -hmm. an actual, we're done here, you know, let's move on to the next thing. You feel like, no, nah, I feel like this could be more time spent on these, right? Uh, No, it's more like that, uh, with the first batches, I always expect to work more on them, and I'm never even trying to like find the final thing right away. And oh, I see. So, yeah. So like, what 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 are you trying to ask them? Like, how to discover is it when? Is it good or well, bad? Like, yeah. Big question. Yeah. Is it a good approach to uh, try find the, your final version right oh, away, I see. or okay? Yeah. Um. So I, I like to, if, if especially if you're doing this on your own, mm -hmm. um, I like to suggest that you give yourself a soft deadline. So let's say it's the beginning of March yep. this month, and you say, okay, I'm going to start designing a character and or a set of characters, mm -hmm. and at the end of the month, I should have like one or two portfolio-looking pieces. Okay? okay? And then by the end of the month, um, it might be great, it might be garbage, but you should have two portfolio-ready characters mm -hmm to the best of your ability. And then when you when you get those characters and you look at them, then you say to yourself, okay, what was the main struggles? Why do I still feel like these aren't good enough, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what should I do next month? Yeah. If you constantly live in this state of like, you, you're constantly like just second guessing yourself, you're never really like, like putting your feet in the world of finalization, mm -hmm. um, you're not quantifying anything any then. It's all just speculative. Like, you should genuinely make a painting that would be bad, so that way you can see what it felt like to do it mm -hmm. and how you can improve it next time. Okay. Uh, a good example or a good metaphor I like to use is, like, running a marathon, right? Like, you just got to, to finish a marathon, you just got to finish the marathon. Now, whether you finish it um, at a good time, whether you stopped and had McDonald's halfway through, right? Um, ultimately, you finished the marathon, it took you seven days to do this, mm -hmm. way too long, right? But you can say, well, maybe it's because like I kept on getting too tired. Like every time I would like try to pick up pace, I get super tired. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, my back would start hurting, maybe. So then you you know that those are the problems that you ran into. So before the next marathon, you train maybe your endurance, maybe you do some core exercises so you have less back pain the next time you run it, and then you do it again, and sure enough, you go a little bit faster. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, but there's something else that you didn't pay attention to. Maybe like, um, yes, you're now running for longer periods, but you can do better than that, right? So then you, you train differently the next time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 
and then ultimately you start getting to the point where you're like, okay, I want to try to beat like a four hour time, you know, like yeah. before you couldn't even barely finish it, but now you're like trying to like beat like a really good time. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so uh, my, my answer is that you should just quantify as best you can yeah. uh, and as often as you can. Yeah, cool. yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hi, AJ. Hey, what's up, man? I'm SJ. Uh, and uh, my question was, uh, I'm pretty sure you checked millions and millions of uh, student portfolios. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the thing that catches you the most, the things that you remember the most about, uh, like, when you look at some portfolios? Um, that's a great question. Um, the thing that I always catch the most, or the thing that, like, sticks with me, if it's clearly, like, like it's very, very good. Like, if they come to me and they say, you know, I'm a student, you know, my first intuition is like, okay, you know, it's probably going to be like subpar work or it's not going to be the best. Right. Uh, not in like a bad way. I just like expect, you know, this person's coming to me to give them advice. So I'm right. ready to give them some advice. Um, but when they come to me and they're like, you know, I'm a student with so and so and they want to show me the work. And their work's like as good as some of my friends' work mm -hmm. or even better than my work sometimes. I'm like, what the, you know? Um, that. That usually does a really good job. I see. Right, and and that seems like a like well, what the heck? How do I, like, how do I go about doing that? Like getting work better than people in the industry? Wouldn't I just start working already? Well, that that's the thing. Like some people mm -hmm. are pretty good, but nobody knows who they are. Right. Like literally, like I know some artists that you guys have never heard of or even seen their work, mm -hmm. because they just they got snagged up early in their careers, I see. and they just kind of kept on being like badasses and right. never made an art station. Oh, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I know who they are. Yeah, yeah. In fact, one of them, I was trying to find him on social network. I think he just completely purged himself wow. because I was trying to show his work to my students because I was trying to show like what like real good quality work is and that's really strange because mm -hmm. he's really strange, his artwork, but he's also like one of the best painters I've ever seen. Disappeared off the face of this earth. Man. I literally have no idea what he's up to. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to one of our friends that we know mutually and he's like, yeah, I don't know either. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, so there's people like, there's some students that will come in my class for the first time, and they are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're just, they don't know what to do next. They I don't see. really know who to talk to, who to show. So basically what I'm trying to say is like, when a student comes up to me and their work doesn't look like student work, it looks oh, like pro-level work. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's ultimately what's going to, um, that's going to ultimately make me, think, wow, this person, I want to get their contact. Right. Because even if I can't help them get a job or anything, like, I just I just know they're going places. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just, I just happen to be lucky enough to catch them before anyone else did, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, um, like, you should always think about that. Like, uh, you want your work to truly impress mm -hmm. the people you show. And and it's really hard to do. And my advice would be to just keep cycling out. So gotcha. let's say you have a portfolio of, like, 24 images. Uh-huh. Then you just make an, that 25th image, knock out I that see. like, right. and then you just keep doing that, and then just keep mm -hmm. cycling in, and eventually you're going to have a really good portfolio. Gotcha. That people are going to like turn their heads. And then as a consequence of always showing your portfolio too, and always updating your portfolio, mm -hmm. you're learning the habit of constantly making new work, Right. and right. you're learning the habit of constantly showing that work. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you, sh you should be doing. Because eventually it's going to get real good, yeah. and eventually you're going to put it in front of the right person. Right, right. I had a student. Um, I had a student where he came to my class, same thing, like friggin' real good work. And I was like, "What are you doing in my class?" <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "Nah, trust me, man. Like, I'm a big fan of your work and all that stuff. Like, I, I think I learned a lot from you." And I'm like, "Nah, dude. Like, you're being real nice. Like, trust me, man. Your work's way better than mine." Wow. And he's like, "Oh no, I don't say that. Like, t like there must be something you can see." And I was like, well, okay, if I had to think of anything, because I get it, like, you paid me money, I was like, I'll give you a refund, you know? <laughs> and he was like, no, no, seriously, like, I want you to help me. And I was like, okay, well, the only thing I could think of is that your work kind of looks like Massive Black. Mm. And I was like, but Massive Black is, like, the best in the industry, mm. right? So that's not a bad thing. Like, it's just, like, it kind of looks like it, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? Oh, no, that can't be. I want to stand out. I want to be unique. And so mm -hmm. he, like, took off. I didn't hear from him for, like, two weeks. I was like, oh, man. He's like, he's like, oh, what a joke. What kind of terrible advice this guy's giving me. I, was like, I felt, like, insecure in my teaching, you know. <laughs> like, this guy is super good. I'm giving him, like, terrible advice. But he shows up to, like, the last week or something. 
And he said he spent like those two weeks just uh -huh. like grinding. He was looking at all sorts of different references, artists, because he was already good. Right. So he already has that, like what I was talking about earlier, like it's easy to teach people like that. Mm -hmm. And so he came back and his work was like the work I've never seen before. It was insane. Yeah. And I was like, what the? He's like, you want to take over, dude? You want to teach the class? <laughs> and um, he's like, no, dude, I like, like you were spot on, man. Yeah. Like super humble, man, super nice. And at that same time, a uh, massive, uh, not massive black, uh, Six More Vodka, mm -hmm. Marco D uh, um studio was hiring artists. Wow. And I was like, dude, you should apply, man. Like, your stuff's real good. I think they're going to take you. And he's like, no, no way, man. So I, like, messaged Marco. I was like, look, dude, I have a student, man. He's really good. Like, take a look at this work. Like, he did for my class. Like, it's freaking unbelievable. I showed it to him, and Mark was like, dude, this guy's work's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, listen, tell him to go through the proper channels, and then we'll get it. We'll obviously get his stuff, and then we're going to put him through the gauntlet. And so they did. And he messages me, he's like, dude, I got a response from Marco Djurjevic, what the heck? And I was like, yeah, I applied for you. And then it, <laughs> and he's like, what? And I was like, I was like, dude, you're freaking good, man. And um, and then uh, I think he did an art test for them. Mm. And I think it was mostly to see if he can like work within their means. Mm. Um, like his work was clearly good enough. Mm. It was more like, can he work fast enough maybe, right? Um, and he can. And uh, he got the job. Wow. And he was like, Dude, I can't believe it, man. And I was like, well, that's because you didn't believe it. <laughs> like, just try. The worst yeah. that could happen was what would have happened anyway. Mm. Like, if you didn't apply, you wouldn't get the job. Right, right. If you apply and you don't get the job, it still would have happened if you did nothing. True. Right? But in this case, it did it. You got the job. Yeah. And I, I was joking with him, too. I was like, to be honest, it's not really a joke. I was like, I don't think I could work for Six More Vodka, dude. Like, to be serious, like, I don't think I can get a job yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And he was like, no, dude, totally. I was like, nah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't get a job there. I've, I've known Marco for a while, dude. He's mm -hmm. never given me a job. <laughs> He's like, you're pretty good. Cute stuff, AJ. And, um, but, like, you know, I, I recognize when someone's really good is what I'm getting at. Okay? And some students um, uh, are really good, but they just don't put their work out there. I see. And, um, and that always will, will stand out. Just quality, quality work. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what that means, just go to our station and, Look at any of your favorite artists. Yeah. That's quality work. I see. Okay. Cool. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. <coughs> uh, how many more people do we got? All right. Just to make sure I get through everybody. I'm looking at the time. Sometimes I can go on <laughs> on one question. Yeah. Go ahead. So I'm trying to work on my weaknesses, and one of them is focusing in big, medium, small. Uh, what is your advice on trying to get in a habit of getting better at that technique like the getting better at like just having more intuition when it yeah. comes to design uh, yeah that's one of those things where you just gotta like um like you do a piece of work and then you try to like check your check your answers kind of thing it's like when you do like a math test or something and then you got like let's say the few of them wrong you go back and look at the back of the book kind of thing and see what the answers were and then see what you might have messed up so like um some people don't do that they just like just kind of like can't see their mistakes but like if you're like, okay, let me like quantify some stuff. Let me see if like this, um, let me turn that off. Like, is this like the same ratio as that? Like, you know, you have like this actual tool that you're measuring with, you know, and you're like, oh, they're, they're not like, like in this case they are because obviously I'm trained in it. But you'll, you'll see that most people will actually have a similar shape, like all the way down, man. And they're like, oh man, what the, and so then you just got to correct for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you if you don't uh, check your work, how do you know what to correct, right? And I find that um, putting that time in, investigating to what the problems could be constantly, that's the way you get through it. Um, because ultimately, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it muscle memory, okay? So think of it like this. Like when you walk and you trip and you almost fall, but you catch yourself, Right, because I'm sure you d you've done this before in your life. Where multiple you trip. times. Yeah, yeah, multiple times. <laughs> yeah, I never catch myself. Face first. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> yeah. No. No, but I'm sure like you might stumble on a curb or something, right? But you, you don't ultimately fall all the way down and like break your neck or anything. Yeah. Um, do you think about like catching yourself? No, right? You just do it. Do you just do it, right? But there was a time where you you weren't. Like you would fall, you would fall on your face, and that was when you're like a toddler, right? Yeah. I have children. I see them doing it all the time. Right? I see one of my kids, he's like running full speed with socks on, like on carpet, no problem. 
But then, like, hardwood floor, he was running full speed still. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about friction, man. And, like, having frictionless, like, a scenario. And he's running, and he's like, ah, ah, <laughs> Yeah? But now he knows, you know? I didn't stop him either. I, I knew it was coming. And I was like, he's going to learn the hard way. Um, <laughs> and he did, man. And he, he, he recognizes now, like, I've got to be a lot more cautious. Uh, but my kids, dude, they fall all the time, man. Um, but less every year, you know? But it's not like they're actively training not to fall. <laughs> they're just, their brain is like, all right, this person's not getting the hint. And so they'll like just, <laughs> it'll, it'll just do it for them, you know? And when you're doing, if you're constantly exposing yourself to, um, to a very specific thing that you're not good at, yes, you're going to fall a lot, you know? But eventually, it will literally feel like second nature. Like, you literally will not be thinking about it anymore. It will just be happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you've seen this, too, where uh, there's an artist who's really good at what they do, um, but they can't explain it to you, right? Yeah. Um, it's not that they're bad artists. They're just not really good at teaching what they do. And a lot of the reason why is because they've practiced in a way where they weren't paying attention. They were just putting the, they just draw all the time. They paint all the time, and they don't put any conscious effort on trying to learn, like, why and how it works for them. They just do it, and then when someone asks them, like, hey, how do you do that? They actually really don't know, you know? They're like, uh, I just put the shapes together, and it just works, yeah? And you're like, what? It doesn't work when I do it, you know? And so, uh, yeah, that, that's the point I'm making is, like, you got to, like, check your work, you know? Like, constantly say, okay, now that I think I'm done, is this good? Oh, wait, I'm missing the layer caking. I'm not doing the rule of three. Like, I've only repeated this shape once, and everything else is, like, a whole different shape, a whole different design. Like, okay, that's clearly, I need to make some sacrifices here, you know? Um, that comes with practice, Okay. But uh, also, if you're consciously paying attention, it, it moves a little bit faster. Yeah, people don't do it though. Most people just they just move on to the next painting. Yeah, but you should like stop and learn. You know, um, actually, <coughs> so I'm like thinking about doing um, like uh, a graphic novel. You know, and I started like practicing doing some images, and uh, some of the images uh, I was doing the environments. I recognized I had to like draw environments, and I was like, wait a minute really bad at drawing environments, you know? And so I bought, like, a sketchbook, and my goal is to try to fill out uh, two or three sketchbooks in the next few months. Um, and specifically, I'm going to only draw, like, uh, three-dimensional surfaces and, like, environment-type stuff so I can practice my perspective. And, like, I feel the page, you know? Like, I don't show this to anybody. This isn't, this is not, I'm not making a new art book of, like, bad drawings. Like, I'm just drawing all the time the very thing, and I'm practicing very specific stuff constantly. And then when I feel feel like I learned something, I practice it on the next page at least once or twice, uh, so I, it sticks, you know. Uh, but yeah, like if you look, it's just like bad drawings, man. And I just I just try to fill the page. I'm like the whole goal is um, just to fill it out. And I was gonna draw on the back side, but I realized it's see through. It's like nah, maybe what I'll do on the back side is I'll, I'll get like a pencil or a light pen, like a ballpoint pen, and just practice like drawing ellipses or something. So I can get better at perspective, because with characters you got to be pretty good at it, but not like, like it's gonna, it's it's like if you don't know how to draw like the human anatomy, it's really noticeable as a character designer. Uh, if you don't have decent perspective, it's really noticeable as an environment designer, right? Like if I'm drawing like, um, like a cube, like let's say I'm drawing like a side of a building, and I'm like, all right, that's looking dope, and then like my other building's perspective is like. Uh, I'm actually doing a bad job of drawing a bad. Like, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. It's just so, like, I just start drawing, like, some weird thing that has, like, a whole different perspective. has, like, its own horizon line, like, up here where the, I established up there or down there. Like, that's noticeable. People pay attention to that. They, they catch it right away. Like, it, the fact that it was actually hard for me to draw it immediately bad is proof that it's working, man. I'm learning something, you know? <laughs> Um, but I'm not good at it, man. I I've literally have not trained. Going back to what I said earlier in my lecture about, like, just default think that you're bad. Even if I, I, even if I might have some skill, right? Just default think that I don't know how to draw perspective well. And that puts you in a better mind, uh, mind frame, yeah? So when you're doing the design, think the same way. Like, I got to check. I got to practice. I got to check. I got to practice. And then maybe do, like, a 30-minute painting where you just completely just see if you can do it. 
Uh, and it might not be good the first few, but you just that's why you keep doing it until it starts getting good. Yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we got about 10 minutes left. We can, right, go, we can go a little longer. That's not a problem. I just want to make sure we get through everybody. All right. So uh, we're going to move a little bit faster. I'm going to give you guys lightning round type answers. It'll be, it'll be quick. Um, so as far as the industry is concerned, what is your um, artistic bus bucket list? Um, no, I think I've already Cross pretty out. content. Yeah. Uh, that's why I started learning programming. Okay. You know? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Do the rest of the way. Like, I'm good. Yeah, no. Like, um, it's, a, it's a whole grass is greener kind of thing that happens. Mm -hmm. Where um, you know when you're outside of it, it feels like it feels so far away. But then when you fir first get inside of it, like you're like, okay, this is great. And then you want to like try to get to the bigger studio, and then then you get to the bigger studio. You go, well, now like, well, I'm trying to work on like a movie or something, right? Then you work on a movie, and you're like, well, now like I want to work on I don't know something that's not like you know maybe something that's different, like uh, like something for animatronics or some real robotics or something, something outside of like our industry, but it still re requires art. And then you do that. And then you're just kind of like, no, I think I can do whatever I want to do with this field now. Like, and it's like I've put like 10 years, 12 years of time into it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's, a, there's a definitely a, a, a feeling of like, OK, I feel pretty accomplished. you know. And now I'm like, OK, well, wh what should I do next? And that's why I decided like started to teach. And right now, I think teachers, teaching is one of the things that I actually do feel that it's really hard for me not to enjoy. Like I constantly do like to teach and help people. Um, I think it's just in my nature, you know. I like to see people succeed and, and do well, and I like to meet new people. And so, um, I think teaching is something I might always do, right? I might become like a game developer one day, right? Making like cool games that people like. Um, but I'll start teaching people how to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like um, my bucket list is. It, it, I don't have one, really. I'm like, I'm pretty happy. It's, it's just like, okay, well, I just want to be um, sustainable so I can just have more time. Yeah. That's like, it's, it's not like a, a success thing anymore. It's more like, I just don't want to uh, always have to work. I want like more time to do, like learn stuff. Yeah. And if I were to go back in time and like find like the 16 year old version of me and say, did you know you're going to be like this internationally known like concept artist who works on movies and video games and stuff? The 16-year-old version would be like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? <laughs> like, we're going to learn how to play guitar, and we're going to become a plumber, dude. And I'm like, <laughs> no, dude, trust me. So uh, for me to have, like, a bucket list, and knowing that that's what happened to me already, mm -hmm. like, imagine, like, the 45- or 50-year-old version of me coming back and say, listen, dude, um, we're the president of the world. <laughs> Wait, president of the world? What do you mean? Like, you mean the United States? No, no. Like, climate change is really effed up everything. And then they're looking for people to be world. And there's only a few of us left. <laughs> you, you speak well enough, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and now you're the president of the world. It's, it's yeah. not as big as it sounds, it's like 10 of us, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's really kind of like uh, short-sighted to have that intense amount of foresight. I like to think like five years ahead now okay. instead of like too far, because life happens, man. You never know, yeah. you know? And so, so I'm keeping my options open, right? So we'll see what's up. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Mr. Anthony. Hey, what's up, buddy? Um, I sort of wrote something down just to ask you. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's That's not great. a question. It's more like an experience, and I want your views on that. Okay, go for it. Um, so, so I like doing environments. Cool. But up until now, I've been working on Photoshop only. Got it. I've met, I met some artists yesterday um, who have good work. They told me to work on 3D. Uh, a lot of people said that 3D has more jobs. They said that... Um, the com concept art industry is super competitive and like sure. you got to <laughs> like be like what I just said earlier yeah. yeah yeah and you just got to be like really really good and companies don't just give you that role if they uh, if you're a junior artist or they know that you don't have experience and stuff sure um, well I do know that uh, we should expand to other softwares and other 3D stuff and all that stuff yeah but um, uh, and about the general practicing daily uh, that you said uh -huh. We should practice daily to get better at Photoshop, Anatomy, Basics, and all that stuff. Yeah, I absolutely. I know all that, but uh, it sort of made me question my career in a way. Got it. And uh, it kind of got me scared initially yeah, and yeah. psychologically also, but um, then it also made me challenge myself to uh, sort of like be there and be one of those unique 
people or um, take it in a positive way and work on it more. What do you what do, what do you have to say on that? Yeah, it sounds like my my specific. I just said like the same story, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right? No, no. I'm just saying that you're so you're you're not wrong to think that um, it can happen. Somebody's got to do those jobs. Um, the the problem with the feedback that you got, and I'm sure these artists are really good and are well respected, um, but I'm gonna talk some trash right now, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it's not that they're wrong, man. It is hard. It is very challenging. There isn't as many positions as you as you would like. Um, but the problem that it, they're, they're, the problem with their feedback um, was that they were probably looking at your work and it just wasn't good, right? And instead of telling you how to improve your work, they told you that it, it's just hard. That's the problem with their feedback. Because if you want to be an environment character or environment concept artist, and you tell me, like, I really want to do this, then I'm going to tell you that you need to, like, master your perspective. you got to learn light and color really well. You have to paint environments. You should be doing plain, plain air paintings often. You should study the masters. Because right now, your work is not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, but people don't want to hurt your feelings, right? So they're going to tell you that, oh, yeah, just try something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm going to show you something. Right. So now imagine. Okay. Now imagine you showed somebody a portfolio and your images look like this. Do you think they would say, you know what, you need to mix it up, man? You draw too many mechs. You know, you need more environments in your portfolio. Uh, well, let me see if I can find the website that's not going to crash. There you go. The architecture is going to work better. Right. Like, ah, oh, bro, you draw too many mechs. You need more. You need more variety in your portfolio, which I'm sure many of you have heard. Right. Oh, you know what? You should try to do more uh, prop art. Right? Do you think they're going to tell this guy that? <laughs> because in that, in the same context, right? Because maybe you only have like one thing, and they're like, it's all bad. So they're like, yeah, you should mix it up. Mm -hmm. But when it's all good, they don't tell you that. <laughs> yeah, true. I agree. I mean, it, it, it's more than true. It's just yeah, like yeah. a, it's it's mm -hmm. a true fact. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like yeah. if you look at any artist on our station, let's play a game. Let's find an art that looks really nice, right? Like, let's look at this art right here, right? It's pretty cool, huh? Well, it looks like this person does a lot of the same stuff, and it's pretty good at it. And it was one of my students, by the way. <laughs> Real stubborn guy, but he, he, he got through it. <laughs> you know? Uh, and he had, I'm sure he, he had very similar problems as well, and I remember telling him, just stay focused and get good, dude. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's take a look at this one. This is like good, but in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. Stylized, stylized work. Maybe it's not your your fancy, but it's definitely good in that realm. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he's got realistic drawing. You know what? <laughs> he needs more 3D, man. Like, what's <laughs> he doing, dude? All this really good drawings. So he's not going to get work. Uh, how is he going to work? Oh, yeah, I guess he is a working artist, and he has 23,000 followers. So some people think he's good, you know? I mean, let's keep on playing this game. Let's keep on finding images. Oh, I don't know, Swang. You probably need to do more character work, Swing. <laughs> Try again, bro. Oh, I guess he does have some character work, and it's still good. <laughs> yeah. You know, the industry's not looking for line artists, bro. Like, you shouldn't be drawing. You should do all photo bashing. You think someone's going to tell this guy that? Dude, look at this. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Like, nobody gives you crap and tells you the wrong advice when you're really good. Mm -hmm. um, so you got to remind them if you get reviews to say, listen, I understand. Like my work's probably not as good as it needs to be, but what what's missing? Tell me, please. Like tell me your honest opinion. Why my work? Why you would never hire me? Yeah. I was like, I want to get better. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, telling me to do 3D is an easy solution. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't want the easy one. You tell them. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to respect you for that, and they're going to probably tear you apart and you're going to hurt your feelings. And you're going <laughs> to regret what I just told you. <laughs> but, but that's what's going to help you, man. You yeah. know? And then again, like one day you're going to be doing workshops and you're going to give people the same advice because it, it works. Mm -hmm. Staying focused, putting the time in, they're going to give you, it's going to give you good work. Vitaly does mechs, man. That's what he does. It's the best. So good that everybody's biting his style now. Like if that looked familiar, it's because he started that whole aesthetic, you know? Okay. So, um, yeah, that's my answer to that question. Thanks. Or to that statement, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, going back to your uh, mentorship for a moment, 
I was wondering, yeah, totally. for your mentorship, would you recommend a student be like, that's the only thing they're doing? Or if a student is already taking classes, they are still in school, sure. do you think they have time? And would you recommend it that it's, or they, do you think they'll have the time to do the assignment and commit as much time as you would like to your mentorship? Yeah, that's a good question. I've had some students mm -hmm. who've taken classes outside of my class and done well. I mm -hmm. had students who didn't do so well. Okay. It just depends on how much how much work your your how much workload you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do classes to, to uh, for brainstorm too, which is like a physical location. Yeah, I know. And um, mm -hmm. and like for for brainstorm, mm -hmm. like I would have some students that would be taking like four or five classes, and I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like you gotta th you gotta think that each class mm -hmm. is potentially 15 to 20 hours of work. Right. Right. So if you're doing like four classes. Mm -hmm. You're working more than this. There's no, there's no time in the day. Like you're working way too many, or taking t way too. You're gonna, it's gonna suffer. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say if you were to ever take my mentorship, uh, that it's absolutely fine to take like other classes and do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, also understand like if if those classes are gonna make you work a lot, it's gonna it's gonna be hard. Yeah. Right. But if you have classes like I don't know, like you have like a math class or whatever, or some class that's like more of like an elective or something that's like just needs you gets you through. Your, your school, um, and you have a few of those, mm -hmm. and maybe like one class that you really care about, then you, in that case, you could probably do it. Because you can just like do whatever you need to do to pass those classes. Like when I was in school, I had like rigging, for instance, and like the last day, I like a class, like I did a rigging, like the rig, mm -hmm. and I just turned it in, and I got like a C for the whole class, <laughs> you know? Um, but I'm not a rigger. Yeah. I just uh, I just got through I just got through the classes because that's what I was required to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but when I had classes where I was like asked to draw, like I put the time in, you know. Um, right. I, when I was in other classes, I would be drawing and painting. Like uh, I would be in some 3D classes, and mm -hmm. my 3D instructors, like some of them that were really good, like they knew that this is what I wanted to do. So they said, "Look, just turn in a midterm, turn in a final, um, and you can just paint the whole class." But like I was, I had to be painting. Like I had to be like doing what I wanted to do, because if I was like, you know, on my, MySpace, because MySpace was popular at the yeah. time. <laughs> you know, if I was like on that, if I was clearly like dicking around, I don't think they would have given me that lenience. Right. But uh, but I, it was clear that I was getting better at it. It was clear that every time they saw me, I was doing this type of stuff. Um, you might have some teachers that will respect that and respect that they want you to be the best you possibly can be. Maybe you don't want to be a 3D artist, you know. In that case, that's what I'm saying. Like, just do whatever you can to pass the class mm -hmm. and focus all your efforts on what you really want to do. Right. You know, and because um, that's that's better. Yeah. Right. Are you still teaching on Brainstorm? Uh, yeah, actually. Awesome. Yeah, that's okay. why I'm not staying the whole weekend. I have to teach on Sunday. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the last question, yeah? Is there any other? No, I think this is the last one. And we'll, we'll call it a night. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Um, for students or just anyone trying to break into the industry, what would you say is the most common mistakes you see uh, in portfolios or just trying to get a job in general? Okay, uh, this one's a pretty practical one. Um, don't show studies. Like I mentioned, you should do studies, right? But you don't have to show somebody. Nobody's gonna, it's not gonna be like you have like the still life of a basket of fruit in your portfolio and like you go show it to like the insomniac guys who are like, dude, we're really, we're working on Fruit Ninja 7 <laughs> <laughs> and we really need someone to draw some really impressive fruits. You know, that's not gonna, there's a, there's rarely going to be a situation where <laughs> you know it's going to happen, right? I'm sure it happens somewhere. Maybe somebody really wants that, but uh, for most jobs, it's very unlikely, right? Um, like anatomy stuff. Again, it's like if, if you uh, the great insult to you know a, a recruiter potentially is that you have all these really cool, beautiful like renderings of anatomy and, and life drawing, but then all your characters look disjointed and have no structure. <laughs> like they're not going to be fooled. You know, like, it's not like, look, I can do these really impressive anatomy drawings. They're like, yeah, but why aren't you doing it in your actual character designs? Uh, I remember one time I, was, I had a, a, a review, and I was looking at the guy, because like, he had the studies, and I was, he had it in the front of his portfolio, and I was like, all right, let's get through all this. And then I got to his characters finally, and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, y you don't know how to paint materials, your anatomy's off, and all this stuff. And he's like, no, man, like, I do a lot of studies, and like, uh, there must be something else is wrong with my work. And I uh, and it's beautiful because I used his own work against him, and I like pulled up to like this really beautifully rendered like chrome ball that he had in one of his studies, and it looked like a, it looked like a real chrome ball. It was super impressive. And then I like took out the other page of his portfolio where he had like a metal material on his character and it look, that looked plastic. And I was like, 
is that supposed to be plastic or is that supposed to be metal? And he's like, oh, right? And he was like, it doesn't look like metal, you know? And I was like, yeah, man, you're tricking yourself, dude. And, um, but like, it was like so clear to him once he saw his two works together. Like, what's the point of doing all these like studies if you're not applying them? So there, there's definitely a disconnect there. And then I gave him advice on how to fix that, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, oh, my God, I've been doing it wrong all these years, you know? And it's like, no, don't worry, man. He's like, oh, you're right. And I was like, no, no. Um, um, but he, he understood what I meant. And so uh, that's a bad thing to do. Don't show your studies. Just show their work. Just let people, like, even if your studies are better than your work and you feel like that's something you want to, like, impress about somebody, it's a lie. You're not, you want to show the portfolio and you want to get critiqued on that. I think that... Um, if you want to be um, a concept artist too, or a 3D modeler or whatever, it should be very specific. Um, if you want to be an environment person, you should try to have mostly environments in your portfolio. Okay? Um, you would hear people say you should have a little bit of both or a little bit of whatever. And like, I, I'm a big fan of being a jack of all trades, but a master at one. You know, not the it was like the master of none. Like, no, you should definitely master one. But it, it is actually a good idea to like learn some 3D learn some photo bashing, maybe learn some animation, but just as a supplement to be like, to make the other thing really, really good, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because there's so much time in a day, if you're spreading all that time doing all these other disciplines, uh, your work will be ve very mediocre. And I'll, I'll end it with this like last point, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, I'll give you a visual example of why it's a bad idea to be a generalist in the beginning, right? Um, so imagine that you're being a generalist, right? You have like the A, B, C, D, different professions, right? So then let's say just two people, like you uh, versus person two. And person two is really good at uh, whatever profession D is, represents. Okay, let's say environment, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, do you think that person D is going to get the job if the job is requiring, or person two is going to get the job if the job is requiring uh, someone to do A type work? No, right, because they only have D. So you're thinking, yeah, see, that's one for that. Uh, what about applying for a job that's looking for a B? Well, there's one for that, right? So obviously until you get to D, then that, that person's clearly going to stop you, right? Because they have that much more work and effort into that one thing. Like I just showed on ArtStation, right? Mm -hmm. Very clear. There's a very consistent pattern to really good artists. They tend to do that one thing, you know? And here's the problem with this thinking is that there are specialists for all of those other things, homie, you know? <laughs> You're not just, it's not like some sort of closed environment where like, ah, oh, you know. No, like all these other people exist and all these other people are gonna have a shot at that same job and they're gonna take those specific jobs away from you. And here's another thing that people don't recognize, okay? Let me give you another good example of why it's a bad idea. So. Let's imagine that you're a $1 million company, or like you're a multi-million dollar studio, and you have like $1 million budget to hire concept artists. So then you can hire some of the best artists and give them a good salary, like 100000 That's like 10 artists. You can have like three good environment artists, like they're specialists, that's what they do. You can get three character artists, right? You can get some of a vehicle artist, maybe a prop artist, and that's like all they do. Like, like you can get me, and then you can get Kalen, Right? And pay us into like, if they only have two, that's give us 500,000, please. You know, they're not going to do that. <laughs> but you see my point? Like, they got money and they can buy multiple artists, right? Uh, indie studio, smaller studio, will usually probably have like a 50 to 100K budget to hire artists. This is why they have to hire like junior level students out of college that are pretty generalists, right? Mm -hmm because that's all they can afford. They, if they're going to pay you a reasonable wage, and they, let's say they need like two, just two. If you only have 50K, you have to pay each artist like 25,000, if you're trying to be fair. And sometimes they don't even do that, right? Uh, but even if it's a 100K budget, like 50K is not as good as it needs to be, especially with you guys' student loans, right? And the problem too, the problem with this is that you are now surrounded by other just mediocre artists, right? Staying mediocre, where in this other situation, you're working with the best of the best of the best, all getting paid like hundreds of thousands of dollars each. So you're surrounded by literally like elite artists. So your ambition is also at that level. So this, this growth is exponential when you're working here, where this one's linear, right? 
And here's another way of thinking about that. If you had six mediocre artists, let's say you hired six of them, and you only hired two uh, lead artists for the same budget. Let's say you had like $200,000, right? And you can hire six mediocre artists, and you had 200K here, and you just give one each. Right, a character dude, and uh, or character artist, and then like an environment concept artist, right? Mm -hmm. So you got one of each discipline that you may need for your game. And it's the same budget. What would you rather do? Would you rather choose a team of just people off the street, like a pickup team, or would you get LeBron James and Michael Jordan? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right, so it becomes so obvious after that. Like, of course, because even if Michael Jordan and LeBron James are outnumbered, they're going to ball that team of six. It's a team of five in basketball, right? And you gave them an extra team, and they still won't win. <laughs> you know? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, so the problem is, like, the whole idea of, like, getting into the, the first job um, it's actually kind of kind of keep you stuck for years, you know. That's actually what happened to me and Kayla when our first job. We worked for a low tier company, and we didn't challenge ourselves because me and Kayla were really bad artists at the time, and we were just like, yeah, let's keep working, whatever. And then we got laid off, and we had nothing. We had no good portfolio. We were like really out of luck, and so then we obviously changed our perspectives, and then uh, and then I worked for Sony, and it just like I said, it's because now I'm working with Izzy Medrano, Luke, Luke Berliner, uh, Cecil Kim. Jung Park, you know, like these are people that I look up to. And that's why I was painting even harder every day because I was surrounded by legends, you know? And so, and then the artwork before me was like Charlie Wen, Ryan Minerding, like these are like, some of the big hitters at Marvel now, you know? Like their artwork was still in the studio. And I'm like, oh, dude, they made a huge mistake, man. And so I just really went for it, you know? So I think the problem with people's portfolios, getting back to that initial question, is it's not focused. Right? They're trying to get a job rather than try to get a career. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. That's it, man. All righty. Thank you guys very, very much for coming out tonight. Um, again, uh, this will be uh, posted soon. I'm not sure exactly when, but they'll edit it together and create a nice little, uh, a nice little video, uh, edited video of this. So you guys can go back and watch it. You guys can pass a link around to your friends. You guys got some really, really, really good information tonight. So I hope you guys are able to glean something uh, valuable from this, or you should be able to glean something valuable from this. And uh, next year, we're going to do it all over again. Uh, in April, uh, we do have a very special event. April 11th, we'll be having an event uh, on what it takes to become a professional concept artist in the industry. Uh, we'll probably talk about a lot of things that Anthony mentioned tonight. But uh, there's some very specific things we'll talk about that'll be very helpful for you. So that'll be a Thursday night, um, most likely in this classroom. We're in A23. Uh, that'll be April 11th. So hopefully you guys can all make it out to that. We'll be posting signs up over the next few weeks or whatever. Um, but uh, for GDC, our GDC speaker series, that's it. Next year, we'll do it all over again. Like I said, maybe we can get AJ back again. So let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> All right, have a good night, guys.